Going into our 10th season in program history, Grand Rapids has come a long way as a school, and we're going to have one last ride in the series finale, seeing if we can bring home another championship. But first, let's go back to the beginning. We started so inexperienced with a 50 overall team relying heavily on wide receiver Matt Land, and even though our first year was rough with some very heartbreaking losses, we pulled through to get our first win in program history versus Central Michigan, and that was the turning point that changed it all, because it helped us land someone named Ben Fowler who led us to a huge overtime upset win over Notre Dame, and we went from going 1-11 and to going 3-9, and but he was only a Juco, so in his second and final year at Grand Rapids, we had to say goodbye after he led us to our first bowl game where we lost to Wyoming, and coming off a 6-7 and seven year, you'd assume that we'd continue to improve, but in Season 4, Grand Rapids failed to make another bowl going 5-7, and seven, and all of a sudden, star quarterback Ryan Pace was a senior, so we had to make the most out of that, where the best pass rusher in school history, Joel Johnson, forced the game-winning fumble against Michigan, helping us beat the Wolverines for the first time, and we'd go on to win our first bowl game in program history as well versus Colorado State. To this day, Ryan Pace holds most of our school passing records, but the guy that replaced him helped us beat Michigan State, and freshman Pat Smith had us at 5-0 until our undefeated rival Central Michigan took us down. They'd make the playoffs where we'd end season 6 losing to Michigan and missing out, but we beat Nebraska in a bowl to go 10-3, and, and it stunk losing senior pass rusher Joel Johnson, but the following year, construction of the new stands in our stadium was finally complete, and that extra support led to us staying undefeated and winning our first MAC championship in season 7. Quarterback Pat Smith even even took home the Heisman Trophy, but USC was too tough of a match for us in the playoffs. So going into his junior year, Pat Smith wanted revenge, and we went 16-0, winning our first national championship ever over Penn State, where it also helped that we had a stud at wide receiver, Zach Wilson, who returned 16 kicks in one year for touchdowns. Pat Smith went on to the NFL though, so next up was John Davis, and Grand Rapids also got invited to join the Big Ten, but that didn't matter because in Season 9 between John Davis and Josh Hartman, our running game was too hard for almost anyone to stop, so we'd win our second championship this time over rivals Michigan, which was sweet. And that leaves us here in season 10 with a ton of new faces on offense, but our defense is almost identical, so they should carry us, and we have to go for the three-peat. It won't be easy in the hardest conference in football, especially since I've added top 15 teams, Pitt and Notre Dame, to this grueling schedule, but we've never had a team overall this high before, and I think John Davis could win his second straight Heisman. Six of the top eight teams in the country are in the Big Ten now, so it's important that we start the year with a win, and we'll see what happens here at Hulu Field versus Wisconsin. We're opening it up on defense, which is our better unit, so I'm excited to see how it goes, but we have just been gashed from the start. Safety Danny King is going to have to get back to their running back, and how on earth has it gone this badly? We got to hold them to three. I've talked so highly about this unit, and that pass has floated straight to Danny King, but we couldn't get the interception, and on second and goal, John Jordan has a lot of time, but he throws it straight to the safety. He's made all the plays for us. The senior just stepped up in the best way possible, and I was not kidding when I said that we are going to lean on our defense heavily. We're also going to have to run the the ball a ton because there's a lot of new freshman wide receivers on this team and it's about time that Josh Hartman gets a lot of looks because he's a beast so things are staying on the ground and on second and two I'm pitching it to freshman Sean Kelly who is not going to get around that defender. Now we have freshman Jay Atkins in the game and he couldn't get much there so I'm going to pass for the first time. Kevin Holliday is open and John Davis was able to hook up with him. The good thing about all of our young new receivers is they were highly ranked recruits so they should be pretty good and Josh Hartman gets us the first. Keeping this drive alive with us and on the option we got nothing. That makes it second and 11. It looks like they've sent in a blitz and junior Pat Walters is going to reel in the ball. So it's nice to see him stepping up since he's the only receiver that has experience. And this has been a really solid opening drive versus Wisconsin, but they stop us. So that's going to make it third and six where I'm going to check it down to Josh Hartman and they're all over him. Senior Aaron Adams is just going to have to put it through the uprights. And for facing off against a top 10 team, I'll always be happy with a lead. This ball should be picked off by Jordan Williams, but somehow the senior has missed the ball. And I could have sworn that we had that there, but we weren't able able to come away with it. So now I'm frustrated. I'm going to send seven players at their quarterback and we get the sack plus force the fumble. Senior Jay Green's going to pick this ball up. And through the two drives that they've had, we forced two turnovers. So that says a lot about this defense. It's crazy that the entire first quarter is almost gone already, but that'll probably happen a lot this season because of the style of football we're playing. And as long as we get wins, I'm okay with that. I think it's so disrespectful that we're not even starting the year as the number one team because we've won back-to-back -back titles, but that just gives us something else to prove this year. And on third, and eight. It looks like they're going with man-to-man -man coverage where John Davis is going to try to roll out, but that was not the right decision. I didn't think that defensive end was going to be able to catch him and we were just going to scramble since nobody else was open downfield. But Jared Lilly just pinned them inside the one, so we're fine and we should have gotten the safety there, but they broke the tackle and it's on Sanders to just bring him down now. That could have been another great defensive hold, but it just didn't work out for us and the screenplay was boxed up. Second and 10 now, we're going with some man-to-man -man coverage, but that's not going to stick with Graham who gets them the first. And after starting the 
this game off with a big run. I thought they'd pound the rock more, but they haven't done it that much. And there they go. The second I say it, they're going to pull off the option to get a big game. It seems like the Badgers are starting to figure things out offensively as their halfback comes away with this catch as well. Danny King doesn't make the tackle in time either. So this is where we could use another one of those turnovers. And on second and 11, it's just a handoff, which we are going to be all over. Third and 13. It looks like they're going to pass. They're going to take their hitch and we just got to make the tackle in time. And that's close. Well, they didn't give it to them as it's fourth and inches, but of course they're going to be going for it. And I thought it was going to be a run. They have faked us out. Well, we have given up our first touchdown of the season. And because Jay Atkins is in at kick returner, we can take out any kickoff we want this year, because I don't think the backup running backs going to have that much success. And they have boxed up all of our wide receivers until very late. We have a minute left in this first half and we've only scored three points. So that has not been a good sign. There's the first pick. And we started season nine the same way, struggling a lot against USC offensively, but eventually we figure things out. So I'm not too worried yet. Our defense seems to be doing fantastic and this is going to go for only a few. Ideally, we'll just hold Wisconsin to a three and out. And I knew that Jay Green probably wasn't going to stick with that guy, but I didn't use her it properly. And on first and 10, they're just going underneath. I think they could use some pressure where they have to make a quick read, but we didn't generate it even though we sent seven and they still have 30 seconds left in this half to get more than a field goal on our defense. Things are not looking too good for us now and we're going to give up another 10. So we have got to step up. I see that their tight ends trying to get open there and it looks like they just went to him late. If this play could somehow last for six seconds, we would hold them down on the goal line, but they caught a touchdown and then it was called back for illegal touching. So we'll accept the penalty, but they're going to get three. And this is not how I wanted to start the series finale. We've got to win a championship and get the three Pete like Grand Rapids deserves. But if we can't pull it off, there might be a secret part 11 that could be coming and we'll just see how things unfold. We're going to start the second half with a couple decent runs, but we're also going to have to learn how to pass with these new wide receivers and take our simple drags like that one. Are you serious, Pat Walters? He just dropped it into an interception and stuff like that hasn't happened to us since like season four. If there's one thing about NCAA football, it's always going to keep things as interesting as possible, but we're going to get the interception with Williams. That's what we need. And this defense can force so many different turnovers. I am not used to getting this many. Normally we just drop the ball over and over, but if I've learned anything from our two interceptions and the sack that we took out of field goal range, it's that we're going to have to keep the ball on the ground a lot and they're all over it. I don't know who I can rely on on third and 14, but I'm going to take the corner route to Ryan Thompson. And I'm pretty sure he's our fourth string wide receiver. So that was risky. There's so many freshmen out there that we're just going to have to trust some of them. And that's a solid juke from John Davis. What would really hurt this season is if our quarterback somehow got injured. And I still can't believe he won the Heisman because he didn't start going off until the playoffs. Jay Atkins almost got loose though. And we are going to try passing on first and 10 just to switch it up. I didn't see anything I really wanted to take until late though. And that's a great throw. Maybe Sean Kelly is the answer. He's a freshman wide receiver that gets open a lot. And we've got it tied up at 10. That gives it back to Wisconsin. I've sent eight at their quarterback and they were prepared for it. That was not the smartest of moves, but good things have come from blitzes in the past. And that's a sack. Now it's second and 18. It's going to be very hard for them to move the chains on this possession. And we simply have our guys back. So we don't give up anything dumb. They're going to somehow get around us though. And thankfully we make the tackle. Nothing's better than a defensive battle to start the season. John Davis has one defender to beat on this play though, and he can. So maybe we should take this drive a little bit slower and get some good running gains like this. I'd like to think that this is going to be Josh Hartman's best season yet, but he is 99 trucking. So this should not happen. And I was expecting him to level that defender. I guess he couldn't put his head down and take him on. Now he just got tripped up by a teammate and it is third and short where the quarterback draw to John Davis is going to work wonders. Keeping it on the ground, we are nearing field goal range. Just one guy to beat again, but Josh Hartman is struggling to run through him. And that's been very disappointing. Eventually he is going to need a break. So we're going to try the bubble screen over to McGee. I don't know who this is, but I have to sympathize with him because this is one of the most painful ways a man can go down. And this is a design quarterback keeper where the blocks are perfect and John Davis is going to take it in. We have taken a seven point lead with just four minutes remaining in this one. Their quarterback has so much time back there though. And John Jordan still couldn't make the throw. Second and 10, I guess they're just going to go with the run. And that was a smart decision on their part because we were not prepared for it. And now they're lasering us up the middle. What are you doing, Danny King? I know for a fact that we can cover guys better than this. We did it for like the entire game and we're all over it with Kyle Patrick. That's a user interception. It's our third or fourth turnover and Wisconsin's really struggled. I cannot believe that we just got another one. They literally threw it straight to us, but we've set ourselves up to win this game and they're ready for the run. On third and 10, we are going to drop back and pass. I think we're going to have the slant open and our line collapsed before I could get the ball out. Well, the Badgers have a little bit of life. They could go all the way down the field on us. Their running backs breaking that tackle to take them to midfield. And it makes you wonder if we're going to have to get another user interception on Wisconsin. We could do it here. We should have gotten the sack there. There's been a lot of route bounces and that's going to be a pick from Grant Sanders. That is what 
we needed. I'm just going to go down now. And the senior cornerback has set a school record with the most interceptions breaking his own. We have forced five turnovers versus a top 10 team. And I'm telling you all, this defense is going to be special. In order to run out the rest of the clock, though, we have to pick up the first down and we don't. So they are going to have about 10 seconds remaining. Maybe it's going to be five by the time that they fair catch this punt and they're actually trying to return it where they stiff armed us twice. That was insane, but there's no way that their quarterback's going to be able to reach the end zone from here. This ball is off target, out of bounds on the other side of the field. So it took a lot, but we are starting the season with a win and Danny King won player of the game. After seeing us play like that, though, the committee thinks we're the number one team. So we have to prove that versus Northwestern. And I see no reason why we wouldn't be able to. Now the Wildcats do have the fourth best offense in the country, but I think it's too early in the year for that to mean anything. And I guess we're about to find out if it does. Starting out on defense, they're going to hand it off and we're all over the run. Now it's second and eight. And again, they hand it off. Danny King's going to miss the tackle though. And that is such a brutal miss because they're going to take it to our 35. We were prepared for it. We were ready, but it's not going to matter. We're not going to be able to make the sack on their quarterback either who's scrambling and I just want to hit stick him. But this has not been a great start. Northwestern's kind of doing whatever they want to versus us and come on. We should have gotten an animation to pick this ball, but we didn't and they're about to score almost instantly. All I can really do is just run, commit, and pray, which didn't work. And we've lost one game in two years, so everybody's going to play us as best as they can. So we're going to need to be on top of things this entire season and with the pitch to Kelly, it looks like he's going to get locked up. The freshman is no Zach Wilson, unfortunately. I really miss the wide receiver already and he needed to go on to the NFL, but his departure has been detrimental to our offense. I mean, last year we were already up by 21 in the first quarter against multiple teams, and this year it might take us all game to score 21, but as long as we hold them to less, it's okay. So we just got to keep our heads down, make the right play, and John Davis is going to get brought down. What's worse is he's also holding his chest. So backup Freddie Martin's handing it off to backup Jay Atkins here, and this is not who you want in the game on a crucial third and four, but he gets in. So even though the backups are out there, it is seven to seven. We're also going to have an option to keep John Davis in. And I'm hoping that this time around our defense doesn't look as bad as we get the pick. That was literally instant from Grant Sanders. And I cannot believe how quickly they just turned it over to us. Our defense forces so many turnovers. Second and 10. I am going to step up in the pocket and try to run with John Davis, but they closed that hole up. So we're going to have to actually pass it on third down and we're going to have our wide receiver late. It's floated and that's dropped. It should have been a bullet pass, but because it wasn't, Aaron Adams is going to have to give us our three and it's back to the defensive side of things where we're going to fill that gap. Now, it's second and 12 and with the counter run again they go nowhere so this is how I expected our defense to play and on third and 15 surely we're going to get another interception what a way to end the first quarter and I don't know what's happening to the quarterbacks we're facing against but they're just going blind they must have been studying Lamar Jackson playoff film or something I don't understand why they're so bad but I cannot complain because we're about to go up by 10 points and that's going to be drop by holiday the game just does not want us to have success through the air but when we pitch it to Josh Hartman he's going to take it down to the end zone and I want to run away with this one, but in order to do that, we're going to have to force some more turnovers, and that also comes with making sure we stop the run. Second and seven, it looks like they did go back to it, so we were prepared, and I'm sure that they'll try to pass on third and nine, so we just have to make sure nothing gets open, and they throw this on the run. That is going to be our third interception. What is going on defensively? We are locking up, and Kyle Patrick goes down. We've never forced turnovers at this rate before, and I thought our defense was already pretty good last year, so that's why I'm so shocked by this, but I guess it's a new normal I'm going to have to get used to, and I feel bad for any Huskies fans that are in attendance. What's wild is that everybody in the stadium knows the run is coming even though they're down by 17 points and it makes it so easy to hold them. On second and eight, it's a pitch. We were all over it. They're going down. So of course, they're probably going to pass on third down, which they do, but I'm stuck on one of the cornerbacks and that's who he was manned up to. User error means we're not going to get the Huskies off of the field when I was hoping we would have, but we could almost get a pick again. And I am so confident in our defensive unit because of how we've performed. That's going to be a sack. So it's nice to see Luke Anderson get more involved and on third and 10, they're not picking it up. We're even going to call a timeout. So with two minutes left in the first half, we have a chance to put up more points on the Huskies and Jay Atkins just isn't that quick. We haven't even had a good offensive game, but we have 24 points because those turnovers have put us in a good position. And I think we also get ball to start the second half, which makes this even crazier. We can't get too cocky because they've already gotten us to a big third and three, but Holiday's going to be able to outrun that defender. And with the right blocks, he is gone. This is going to make it 31 to seven with a minute left in the second. And that felt so easy. I know there are 70 over overall team and Nate Small is going straight to Grant Sanders. He's going to take this and he's gone. Nobody's catching him. I'm literally doing nothing. I don't even know what to say at this point. They are just struggling so much. That is going to be thrown right back to him and he could have had his third pick of the day, but he didn't grab it and I can guarantee that not much of the second half will be shown. After taking that sack, they didn't even try to get points and we get ball to start the third quarter as well. Jay Atkins has a decent return here, but he couldn't get free and Chew Clock is definitely going to have
have to come on against them. We ended up winning 51 to 7, and Josh Hartman got to pad his stats, but that's only because John Davis barely threw the ball. We ran for like 300 total, and I just can't believe it. I don't think I've ever seen this many turnovers happen before, and it's needed since our conference really scares me, so we just gotta hope that we do the same to our rivals, and it's been a while since they've had success against us, but they're a team that you can never count out. I will never forget all the games where they ran for like 300 yards, so that's what we have to stop today. And on second down, of course, it's another run where Kyle Patrick gets over to him, and what was that? I didn't realize we had hitters on our team that could send players around like a rag doll, but maybe that's why we're so good, and on third and seven, I just gotta stick with this route. I was literally all over him. I don't know why their quarterback would throw it, but he's clearly not the brightest, and Josh Hartman is gonna start this one off right. When it's all said and done, he is gonna be the best running back in school history, even if he hasn't been the most explosive like Ben Fowler was, because if we're being honest, we wouldn't have won two championships without him, and I'm just shocked that we didn't fumble it back to the Spartans there. But now it's third and long, so we have to pass, and I'm just gonna try to run with John Davis around this defender. He's got one other guy to beat, and that's not enough. I didn't see anything I liked there, but I also look at one route before I just decide to take off, and this punt's not great, but it took a perfect bounce, and surely we're about to get our first safety of the season. I could not tell you why they are passing on the goal line, but we're not able to get in any pressure, which is a little concerning. We've also missed a tackle. So Michigan State's gonna escape that scenario, and now they're throwing it deep straight to Danny King, but he wasn't able to catch that football. I don't know what their strategy is right now, but we should be able to get the sack. How did he just throw that off of his back foot? And there's just no way in this position he launches it 50 yards accurately. That's why it's so impressive whenever our defense steps up, because we have to deal with all of that fluky stuff, and why on earth is McCauley just running backwards? He is playing man-to-man -man coverage and just decides that he is gonna book it 15 yards away from the guy he's supposed to guard. So I've seen enough of the backup strong safety. He is getting replaced by halfback Jay Atkins right now. I don't know if this is a smart move or not, but we're about to find out. And there are so many weird things happening in this game, but we're gonna make the tackle. So it is third and 11. I just have to make sure that nothing gets open. And are you serious? This is why you can never doubt any team, especially a rival, as they just broke that tackle. And on second and eight, it's gonna be a handoff up the middle where they're gonna take it to the three. To start the second quarter, it's gonna be third and inches. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to stop this, but we do. They lost five yards with that run, and I'll gladly take holding them to three. It would be nice if we could figure things out offensively, though, on this drive, getting some points. And Hartman is gonna do a bulk of the work just keeping it on the ground. I don't know why, but whenever we try to pass, I start the panic. I don't take the things I should like these hitches. And when I do, Pat Walters drops the ball. Even though he's our best receiver and the most experienced, he's been disappointing. So I'm not looking in his direction on third and seven, and instead, we're just gonna miss the throw. This is not how I wanna start off against Michigan State, but you know what? Jared Lilly's gonna put them inside the 10 again, and the bounces on these punts have been incredible. Surely they're not gonna pass the ball like they did on the last drive, but they're gonna run and they're gonna break multiple tackles. So again, we have zero chance at getting the safety, and I've gotta send a blitz on third and six. We have six players getting in, but it didn't generate pressure quick enough. Just from what I've seen so far, this is gonna be a long game for us. And on second and 10, they give it to Manning, who goes nowhere. So if we could just get them off of the field, that would be ideal, and I'm all over that. It should have been picked off by Kyle Patrick, but we got a good return with Jay Atkins anyway, so it's all good, and John Davis keeps this ball with the option, taking us to the 30-yard line. I'm not sure how he missed that pass on the last drive, since he literally won the Heisman, but he's always been a better runner, and his 17 touchdowns on the ground is probably the only reason that he won it last year, so I'm hoping he can come away with one maybe on this play, and the blocks are perfect. There we go. Now, it does give Michigan State a chance to score, but I'm confident in our man coverage to hold it down, and Grant Sanders had it. That was literally it. The turnover that we would have loved to have, but instead it's going to be 7-3 to three at the half, and we're going to open it up out of Wildcat just to see how this works out. Josh Hartman spun that defender around, but because he's 266 pounds, they were able to catch him, and the Spartans haven't been able to stop our rushing attack that much, so we're going to continue to do it on them. I told you all at the beginning of this year, this is a season where we're going to lean on our defense to get the job done, and if we can also come away with points on the offensive side of things, that's great, but my expectations are going to remain low since we've struggled so far, and if these freshman receivers don't get open and catch the ball versus teams like this, they're definitely not going to do it against high-end opponents. But what we learned last week against Northwestern was we play best when we just constantly run it against someone. And now we're just 10 yards away from going up two possessions on the Spartans. But Jay Atkins is still out there and he doesn't get enough. I'm going to trust John Davis to just fight his way in. And it looks like Michigan State is still determined to try and run the football. Jamal Manning has eight rushes for zero yards, but we just got some really bad news. And it's that we're going to be missing Josh Hartman for the next four weeks. Our entire offense revolves around him and John Davis, and this ball is in the air for way too long. So I feel like we should have picked it off, but it's all good. We'll probably get one coming soon and not there. Apparently, it wasn't originally called a catch, but now the refs want to look back at it, and he easily got
shot a foot down. So it's a new set of downs for Michigan State, and I might have run commit on this play, so they got 10 more. I'm still really concerned about the loss to Josh Hartman, though, because I think we'll be able to finish this off, but we're about to play top teams like Michigan and Ohio State, and during the hardest part of our schedule, we're going to be missing one of our best offensive players on third and eight. They don't get a downtime, so they're just going to attempt another field goal, and that was so off the marks. If I've learned anything from this game, it's that we can really control the tempo, but it could also come at the cost of having our star players injured, and we're about to learn how good Jay Atkins can really be for this team. Now that we're in the fourth quarter and we're up two possessions, I am going to have two clock on. I think it's pretty much over, but there's still like five minutes left, so we do have a little bit of work to do, and I think our best option is just let John Davis keep it in his hands where he is going to be able to get around both of these defenders and make that guy miss. There's just one more to beat, and he can't fool him too. That was such a good run, though, and now Jay Atkins should help us punch it in. So I like what I'm seeing out of this team. Just one more defensive stop would seal the game, and that's thrown straight to us. Michigan State just decided they wanted to give us a free turnover there, and they've given up, but we keep holding teams to less and less points. So our defensive unit is getting even better than I thought it could perform, and if we could just pick up one more first down, I would like to run out the clock, but we could also take the touchdown. If John Davis gets in, John Davis is going to get in, and he's going to be our number one running back for the next four weeks. I think we can lean on him since he did win the Heisman, but I am a little worried he's going to get injured, and the fact that we won that by 25 without completing a single pass is kind of broken. These next four matchups definitely aren't going to be fun, but Michigan did lose, so that helps because it drops them down in the standings, and it was to Minnesota. However, they're still favored to take us down, so apparently that loss doesn't mean much, and it's a rematch of the last national championship, but more importantly, the final time we're traveling to the big house to play our rivals. We're starting out on defense where Michigan has decided to pass with the first play and that doesn't work. And with how our defense is playing, it might not matter that we're not going to have running back Josh Hartman, but we still have to get them off the field on this third and 12 where they're just going to throw it up and Danny King is able to get over to the ball. We have held the Wolverines to a three and out. Jay Atkins on the kick return goes nowhere, but that's fine. We're going to need him to be effective running the ball on the ground with us and this is going to be a decent start. Now on second and six, it's another option, but Jay Atkins is going to keep it and there we go. Solid start on the ground and it looks like Alex Bell is out there now, but he'd only get to stay in for a play and it's going to be a third down. John Davis should be able to pick this up for us and if we could have gotten a better block there, I'm almost positive he would have been gone, but it's all good and to keep the Wolverines honest, we have to pass every so often where Ryan Thompson comes away with it and we're inside the red zone. This is a slow and controlled drive, but it seems to be going well for us. And even without Josh Hartman, we might be fine, but it looks like they have a defender all over Davis. So that's going to make it third and six and our slant is open to Kelly. We just need 10 more yards against Michigan now. And they are prepared to stop the run whenever it's in John Davis's hands, but not our backups. So we're just going to keep it on the ground on third and goal, which works. And Jay Atkins puts us up against our rivals. If we're going to pull off the three-peat, we have to keep getting defensive stops though. And they were just disrespectful to Kyle Patrick. So we're going to get him back, setting up a third and five, which is a halfback draw. And we should have stopped him. If anyone's going to give us issues on this Michigan roster, it's EJ Chapman as he just broke another few tackles and we need to track him down with Kyle Patrick. But it's getting ridiculous how he's able to just run through everyone. And it's going to be a challenge to contain him. I like a challenge though, and this is the first play of the second quarter where we were all over it, but they're going back to the run anyway. Tony Clark still has the ball and hopefully somebody can bring him down. They've been driving very well against us and now he's just going to try to escape the pocket. We're going to tackle him. But my main concern is I want to hold them to a field goal instead of them getting a touchdown and that's going to be a first. When they get this close to the end zone, you know that they're probably going to run the ball. So normally those run commits do pay off and they're not going to give their receiver the jet sweep. Their quarterback just kept it instead. Michigan is trying to get tricky to reach the end zone and this is Danny King's opportunity to shine where he made sure that they just settle for three. We're in a position now where we could take full control but we have to end this first half with a touchdown and John Davis is about to get his first decent run of the day. However they're saying it's third and inches so we're just going to hand this one off to Jay Atkins and we're already at midfield but we still have two and a half minutes to score so we need to slow things down a little bit because I don't want to give Michigan the ball back. It's another third and inches but their defensive formation was terrible for that situation and we're going to take advantage of it. I just don't get why they'd only have three down linemen there, but I can't complain because it has kept this drive alive and we're going to take our drag on this play. That makes it third and six where John Davis rolls out. He might have had his corner route, but he took it a second too late. So we're going to have to send Aaron Adams out there and he's going to drill it. They better not get points before the half, but I have noticed that there's a backup quarterback out there and I don't believe he got his feet in. So I'm going to go ahead and challenge it. Even if I'm wrong, this can't hurt us. And it looks like as he is bringing in that ball, he did get his right foot down. Oh, well, I can't be too upset about that. And I just noticed they have their backup out there throwing the ball, so that's new. And Tony Clark's out for the rest of the game with back spasms. It's a really common occurrence for us to face a Michigan backup in this rivalry, but I'm okay with it. And EJ Chapman breaks the tackle.
tackle, which unfortunately still led to them getting the first down, and I feel like we've seen Reggie Rucker before. I could be wrong, but I think we faced off against him last season, and on second and 10, Kyle Patrick covered everything, so now there's a pretty good chance that they're not going to get a field goal out of this drive, and that's how you end the first half. I told you all we were going to lean on our defense, and there haven't been that many possessions in this game, but we're trying to limit them to limit mistakes. But now that they're stuck using a backup, I am confident in our ability to keep up, and we just have to start this third quarter strong with a good drive, which seems likely. I haven't run many of these yet this season, but I did want to at least mix in one wide receiver screen, setting up a third and four where I want it in John Davis's hands, and he's going to fall short. Jay Atkins is pretty big though, so I trust him to help us get that yard, and he's going to do it for us. We are still running like nothing's happened. We're not missing Josh Hartman that much, but I do think he would have taken that for more, and I'm starting to believe that we can actually pull off the three-peat with Grand Rapids. Our team looks really good because we're able to keep up with anybody, and that should be happening at this point in the series, but it took us a long time for me to be able to comfortably say that I can trust our defense, and Jay Atkins is going to get this one. However, John Davis isn't getting up, and we better hope that that is minor because that could really hurt this season. We should have been more careful with him, but I'm not even sure how he got hurt on that play, and backup Freddie Martin is going to hit our third string running back with this halfback screen, but they're stopping it, so we're going to have to take another field goal. There still have been no updates about John Davis, and I'm anxiously waiting for one, but until then, we're just going to have to get some defensive stops. Here on second and nine, it looks like they're going with the option and we're all over it, so all we have to do is prevent them from picking up this third and 12, and we're going to get them off of the field, but I didn't stick with that route perfectly, and this ball is going to be missed. It's a good thing that they have a backup quarterback in there. I think we're going to hold Michigan to just three points, and Freddie Martin is out on the field still, but I know that he can run the ball, so I'm going to trust him to keep it on the ground with this play, show off his speed, and there's just one defender to beat where he swerves inside, but maybe that wasn't the right decision, and where is our update about what's happening to John Davis? It's the fourth quarter, and we still don't have one, and I just want to chew through these final six minutes so we can secure our win. Freddie Martin doesn't look too bad, especially if he can run the ball like this, but what I'm worried about is if we ever have to pass, and he should be able to keep this on the ground for a tutty. It is now 20 to zero, but John Davis has broken his thumb, so we're going to be missing both him and Josh Hartman for a little bit of time, and that could really affect the season. Our defense is good, but we were already having a little bit of offensive issues before our starters got injured, and I don't know who we have to face next, but if it's anybody too difficult, we might be in a lot of trouble. We could have had an interception there, though, and it is too bad that we didn't on second and 10 were all over right, so that makes it third and short where they have decided to pass, and I stuck with the slant. There's just too much time back there, though, and we're going to get the sack. If we could stop them on this fourth and one, we could probably end the game, and there's our defense doing the right thing again. We keep picking up injuries, but we're also picking up win after win, so this finale is going to really test us to see if I've built up the depth correctly, and if we can win it all again, there's going to be no question that we're a future powerhouse forever. This is a great way to beat Michigan one final time, just destroying them, and there's no question that we deserve to be the number one team. I will be interested to see how Freddie Martin does in our future matchups, but so far he seems to fill in pretty nicely, and he only threw the ball one time for two yards, so we can't judge him too much off of this performance, but he wasn't bad. I think I forgot how hard our schedule was about to get, though, because now we have to play number two Penn State, and in the few weeks that we're not going to have our best two offensive players, we're playing three top six teams. If we don't win at least one of these, we probably won't make the playoffs, and I know that we just played really well against Michigan, but we were already in a decent position when John Davis went down, and let's just hope that Freddie Martin can step up. This is going to be quite the run that we're going to need to have, and let's just trust our defense to stop the Nittany Lions, where they are bouncing to the outside, and he is already getting a huge run for them. How did he get out of there without us bringing him down? It looked like we had him all wrapped up, and then all of a sudden we were getting gashed. So I'm not thrilled about that, or the fact that we have to play Jamal Ryan again because he was good, and I wish Penn State would get out of hurry-up mode so I could change up our defense because it just got destroyed. We're about to give up a touchdown in less than a minute, which is just embarrassing from us, and we might be in for a long matchup. This is not the offense that we want to be chasing points with, and we are fumbling on the first play. Are you serious? Luckily, we we picked it up, but you can tell who EA wants to win this game, and if Jay Atkins knew how to block this guy, we might have had a touchdown. I cannot be getting frustrated this early on. I just have to be able to make the smart read, and that was so off target. Well, our punting unit is out there three plays into the game, and with a couple of bounces, it's not going to go that far. Young's able to scoop it up, and our defense, which got dog-walked on the last drive, is going to have to step up. Penn State is going to keep it on the ground on this next play, and I could tell because of the motion, so if we could just hold them on third and ten, we could get the ball back, and King has to make a tackle on Miller. Jay Atkins would then get us a pretty good return, so we're starting this drive in an okay position, but I'm not going to be happy until we're able to come away with some points, and there's the first. After seeing Freddie Martin's first pass, I also want to make sure that he's warm before we throw it again, so we're probably going to run a ton of screen plays on this drive, and now it's third and eight. I don't know what happened to our blocking there, but Jay Atkins is going to have to pull off the miracle. He spun out that defender, but he's been
been stopped four yards short of the marker, and we should probably just send Aaron Adams out there to tack on three. We did get the coach hint that a halfback draw was coming on this one, so those are always super helpful, and on second and 12, they just kept it on the ground. Third and 12 now, they could end up going deep, and they're gonna find Jackson, so we couldn't get them off the field, and again, they're passing, but it doesn't work for them. We were also pretty close to getting an interception animation, but it didn't happen, so that's why it's a big deal Luke Anderson stepped up, making it third and 17 to start the second quarter, and there's no way that we should give this up. It's just a bunch of slants out there. So we're getting it back, but this time Jay Atkins can't return it. I think if we're going to have success with Freddie Martin, we need to make sure we use his legs like this. And he's a perfect replacement for John Davis because he has speed. But if we're not careful, they could hold us because it's third and two and Jay Atkins just made it. As of right now, we have 26 total yards of offense. And here's another halfback screen pass just to make sure that Freddie Martin's warmed up, which is going to work wonders and we should be able to throw it now. It's interesting seeing all these new faces on offense have to figure things out, but Grand Rapids has a style of play that's already worked for two championships, so there's no reason to try and have an air raid offense now, and Freddie Martin's gonna have to get this off, but it's not gonna make a difference. Now we're running another screenplay, and you all probably aren't gonna be happy about this in the comments, because even with Zach Wilson, those weren't the best, and on third and ten, what are you doing? That should have been a first down, but it wasn't, and why do we have the punt team out there? I think Aaron Adams can hit this field goal, and we're about to find out it's a 54-yarder that is full power, which is short. We just gave them really good field positioning, and that could come back to bite us, but I had to try it. And when it came to recruiting a kicker with a big leg, I didn't worry about it back then, but now I'm starting to regret that decision. Aaron Adams has been great, but there's always been a limit to his range, and we just have to make sure that Penn State doesn't reach the end zone, because we cannot afford to fall behind by two possessions. Jamal Ryan is trying to scramble, and we have forced the fumble, but they have picked it up, unfortunately. And we did everything right there, but sometimes you just don't get lucky. That means it's going to be third and eight, where we have to lock up with our man-to-man -man coverage. And I don't know what type of pass that was, but there's been a lot of bad throws in this matchup, and that's a bad kick. If Freddie Martin's ever gonna step up, this would be the time we have our tight end open. But something's gotta be wrong with him. I mean, he's an 85 overall. He should be able to make that pass, and he's gonna have a perfectly floated ball on the next play. So now he's starting to get things going, and this is one of the only runs I think we're gonna have, because there's only 40 seconds left. But I had to mix it in just to make sure that we got at least a field goal out of this drive. And we still have a decent chance of reaching the end zone with that much time left on the clock. But I'm gonna have to start attempting some deeper passes, and I am scared of them being inaccurate and going for turnovers. I might try and hit Sean Kelly with this corner route, but that is about it. And because we couldn't get it out in time, we're just going to have to make it a one point game. We start the third quarter with the ball, so it's not the end of the world. And we had a little bit of a trick play there where our third string running back gets loose. And those were some good blocks. That is what you want to see versus the number two team in the country. But they were just very aggressive when it came to stopping the run on that play. So that's going to make it third and 10 for your Mastodons. And they've gotten in some pressure. Freddie Martin's going to escape it. And this is going to go for the first. We just have to keep this drive alive and with the quarterback draw you know that we're going to be able to come away with like 15 yards but the key to us having success will be getting a touchdown we have a long way to go and Alex Bell is slow but at least he fights for a lot he needs to be out there to give Jay Atkins a breather but sometimes I wish we just played him and we're so close to getting our first touchdown of the day but we're going to need about seven more yards and Atkins is going to get us like five of that here all right it's time to put the ball back in his hands on third and two but he had no chance of making it and I don't know how they were able to get somebody in so free it's fine though because we can trust our defense and ever since that first drive of theirs they really haven't done that much against them I mean they did shank like a 30 yard field goal but it's still a stop and there's another one so we're getting the ball back with the lead and you know that two clock has got to come on as long as we have a good return too we're going to be set up nicely too much was going our way though the refs had to do something and there's still so much time left in this one I wish it could just end now we've gotten to see how these next few weeks are going to go missing some of our best offensive players and Freddie Martin has been serviceable but I'm also terrified of throwing the ball with him, but that's mainly because of what happened earlier on in this series, and I'll never forget those first seasons where we struggled to hit a pass for a while. On third and one, I'm hoping that we get the right block with Jay Atkins this time, and he did his job, so we're gonna have a good run with Freddie Martin, who is gonna be gone to the crib, and we've actually just gone up by two possessions. If Penn State wants to win, they're gonna need to figure some things out against our defense, and that was a laser to open up this drive, but maybe we'll force them into a turnover. Kyle Patrick hits their quarterback, and he goes down. If we could just get Jamal Ryan to fumble again, and actually pick it up, I think we'd be able to end this game. But instead, they stay in hurry up mode in this five wide, and I really want to change up our defensive look. I called a timeout just to do that, so we had some more players out there on the field, but they're just gonna scramble for the first down anyway, and we missed the tackle. Jamal Ryan is somehow still going. And on first and 10, they're passing, where the slant gets open to the two. They're about to reach the end zone, and there's not much we can do about it, but we might as well be pretty aggressive when it comes to stopping the run. We've hit Jamal Ryan twice now, and he's still up. How is he getting into the end zone? We literally had him stop so many different
different times on that play, but it's fine. We're just a few first downs away from winning this game, and we gotta trust Jay Atkins on third and two to hit the hole right, but instead he went to the outside. I don't know what I was thinking there. They also almost blocked this punt, and if they get a field goal, they're gonna win. They must really like this five wide formation because they have come out in it again, and we're not stopping it. So that's not a great sign of what's to come. I've switched it up to zone, and that's not gonna really make a difference. We know that they still need like 20 more yards though because their kicker isn't the best. Kyle Patrick brings down Ryan, and I can pass commit on every single play because we know that they want to throw the rock, but we almost just gave up a huge gain, and now it is third and eight where they are gonna try to throw again. We have somebody over there, and none of our defenders wanted to make a play on the ball. Jamal Ryan's gonna get them a lot more, so at this rate, I can guarantee that they're in field goal range, but we have set them up on third and five, and they tried to chew the clock, so it's a good thing I called a timeout. They're gonna have to take a field goal, and we still have a chance. It would be hilarious if their kicker missed this, and that is gonna miss, so I literally called it, and how do you miss from that far away? That should have been a gimme, but it wasn't, and we're gonna take down the number two team. I mean, theoretically, they might have one final chance if we don't pick up this first down, which we don't, but I'm gonna hit this punt as high in the sky as I can, so hopefully it will just run out the rest of the clock, and it doesn't. All right, Jamal Ryan has one final shot to try and heave this ball to the end zone. He gets it off, and there's not a receiver in sight. That's gonna be it. We're even gonna come away with interception, so that means we're gonna stay number one, and it's great news that I no longer see John Davis on the injury report because that means he should be back for this game, and then also the one against Ohio State, which should decide who wins this division. We're going on the road to play at Pitt for the first time, but I think we'll be fine because they're only an 81 overall, and having John Davis back means we should have a lot more success offensively. We should be able to throw the ball a little bit more. I trust that he's going to actually hit his target. Sean Kelly just spun out that defender, and could the freshman receiver get us started off right? He wasn't quick enough, but he did still get us inside their red zone, and I'll take that, but I wish this speed option was to the other side of the field because it looked wide open, and on third and eight, I'm going to step up with John Davis, run, and and that's going to go to the one. I could have probably taken it in, but I wanted to slide and risk the chance of fumbling. So I'm glad that Jay Atkins was able to finish it off for us. And I'm not sure how Pitt is ranked this high for being an 81 overall team and having one loss, but maybe it's because they're really good at running the football. And as of recently, our team no longer struggles when it comes to stopping colleges that do that, but we still have to get them off the field on this third and one. And Kyle Patrick just shot that gap perfectly. We've opened up things exactly how I was hoping we would against the Panthers. Jay Atkins gets seven. And now John Davis is going to have the quarterback draw play that we love to use, but their defense played it like they knew it was coming. With this option run, they're going to hold him, and I was trying to pitch that ball out, but no matter how much I spammed L1, the game wouldn't let me do it, and look at that run from Jay Atkins. He makes it a third and manageable where he's easily going to pick it up for us, and things could not be going better. Now John Davis is going to fumble it. Why did I even make that decision to pitch it? And the fact that they held us there is so frustrating. I literally jinxed it, and it looked like they were committed to stopping John Davis, but they weren't. I'm not proud to admit that an AI from like 10 years ago just faked me out, but they made a great decision, and they better be running because I ran commit, and there we go. They had absolutely zero time back there, and I didn't even guess right because they were trying to pass, but now it's third and ten. We cannot let a route bounce beat us, and we don't. I think holding them to three there's a big deal, and all we have to do on this next drive is not set them up perfectly with a stupid turnover. It's so easy to try and get greedy whenever you have that third option with plays like this, but you have to be smart, and as long as we keep the ball in our hands, Pitt can't stop us. I mean, they might be able to when Alex Bell is out there, so that's why we're going to resort to passing, and then when I see that Jay Atkins is in the game, it's back to him and John Davis going to work on the ground. The Panthers really aren't showing like any resistance to our rushing attack, which is surprising, but evidently I've recruited a very good offensive line, and why do I keep jinxing myself? That's frustrating, setting up the second and 12 where I am scared to pitch the ball, and my main read on this play is going to be that corner route where McGee is open in the end zone. Even with our assisted help at getting them points, Pitt is still behind by two possessions, and that's a sack, so our defense is stepping up just how we needed them to, but we left the middle of the field wide open for them to run it, and I'm not going to make that mistake again. We have stacked the box, so we should be leaving them no choice but to pass, and they still keep it on the ground, and they're breaking off a big one. This takes them to the 35. There's a little under two minutes left in the half, so it'll be interesting to see how they manage this, and my hope is they also give us some time to put up points as well, but in order to do that, we have to dial up some pressure, and their quarterback felt it. That makes it fourth and inches, and they hand it off, but we are ready for it. So the Panthers somehow managed to not get points there, and they just baited us into that ball. This is why we don't pass it that much, but I see that Kevin Hall holiday is wide open and he is going to make two of those defenders fall on the ground. There's just one guy that might catch him and he is going to take it into the end zone. What an electrifying way to end this first half. Assuming that they don't get some points on us, their quarterback's trying to run and we just have to hit minor super hard. He's going to fight for more. But even if they do get points, I'm honestly fine with it. I was not expecting to score that quick and I honestly think we have full control of this game. I don't see Pitt giving us any issues, but they have way too much time back there and I can't believe that they were able to get that throw out. If anything on their team's good. It is 
their offensive line, but we send in a blitz and we have to remember to mix more of those in. I normally fail to do so, which is going to be an issue, but even with some bad play calling, we still have the number one defense in the country and we should have had that. It looks like they are going to attempt a long field goal, but that was never going to go in. And Jay Atkins actually has an opportunity to return this kick. If he can outrun all these players, that would be amazing, but he needs a couple of good blocks. And that is what our backup running back is going to get. He is gone. It is like Zach Wilson is back on this team. And we have ended the first half up 28 to 3. I would have never predicted we'd have this big of a lead, but I guess we're used to facing off against Big Ten opponents. And now that an ACC one's come out, we've seen that they're not good. If this is the best that their conference has to offer in this season, then not many of their teams are making the playoffs. And my guess is they just handed off on second and 13, but they've actually surprised me by trying to throw. Setting themselves up on this third and 12 where we cannot give up anything deep and they're going to attempt it still into double coverage. That's going to be intercepted by Grant Sanders and he has a chance to return this as well but he won't. It's weird that Chew Clock has already come on against the number five team but this game is already over and I've just been running it with Jay Atkins where he somehow fit through that hole. He's honestly been the perfect replacement and our third stringer even gets a touchdown so we're gonna cruise to our sixth win of the year and Kyle Patrick actually won player of the game. Five TFLs is pretty crazy so he definitely deserved it even though we had multiple offensive playmakers and our resume keeps getting better because now we're gonna face the number two team again but we have to get the win because because the winner of this is most likely winning the division, and we're actually not favored to come out on top. So we'll see what happens versus the Buckeyes, whose 97 overall offense is facing the number one defense in the country. There's no telling if Josh Hartman's gonna play, but even if he doesn't, I'm comfortable using Jay Atkins, and it's time to play for a spot in the Big Ten Championship. It looks like they're trying to pass on their first play, and Kyle Patrick's all over it, so that'll force them into a second and long early on, and with some good block sheds, it's third and 13, where there's no way they pick that up. We have started out strong on the road, and Jay Atkins is gonna take this return all the way to midfield. So this is the perfect place to start a drive. And it said they have the number six defense in the country. So we'll see how they hold up against John Davis. But last year, I remember he shredded this team and I'm pretty sure we did it twice. So I'm not very worried. I thought they were overrated and it seems like their roster consists of the same players, but that ball got tipped at the line. And I don't know why something always has to go wrong when I start trying to pass the ball. Third and five, we are going to keep this on the ground, but that probably wasn't the right move. And I'm almost certain that Aaron Adams can hit from here. So even though coach suggestions wanted me to run a play. We're going to take our three. And there have been games this year where that's all we've needed to get some wins. So I'm fine with it. On first and 10, it looks like Burke tried to keep it, but we're getting better and better at predicting when they're trying to run the ball. And now it's third and 15 where we just have to generate some pressure. I got in with Taylor and forced the fumble. I'm really liking how this one is going so far. And Jay Atkins is going to get out of there, just get a couple more blocks and he would have been gone. But even though he couldn't, it is completely fine. And they were all over that run. Now I have holiday in motion. I could do the shovel pass to him, but I always think that's very risky. So we find ourselves in a third and 15 situation. I want to take this comeback route and it's not caught. I tried to adjust Sean Kelly there to make sure he made the catch, but instead it just screwed us up and this punt wasn't great. But our defense has been amazing so far. So we're just going to trust them and we are not going to stop Burke with this run. Danny King misses the tackle and he's going to have to get back to him. Their last drive opened up the same way, but then we figured out how to get a stop. And I read that perfectly, but I second guessed myself. So that's going to make it second and short where they're trying to roll out and we're all over it. I don't know what they were thinking there, but this is is just going to be a run and Danny King makes it over to Burke. But Ohio State got the right blocks and their quarterback's rushing ability has given us so many issues. Jason Taylor came away with that sack, making it second and 16 and we were prepared for it. So if they want to keep their drive alive, they better have a good game plan on third and 11 and it looks like they don't, but Hancock broke one tackle, he broke two and how is he still going? I mean, eventually we were just going to swarm to him, but that took us way too long and we've gotten the ball back inside the 10 yard line. It is clear that points are going to be pretty hard to come by in this matchup and they did not let us run a quarterback draw. So we have to pass on third and seven. We have our drag open and Holiday is going to pick it up for us plus get a bit more. I got to give our receivers credit. They seem to be pretty solid after the catch, but we just have to get it to them first. And I feel like they know I want to run a counter to this left side of the field because they had their defense out there perfectly to stop it, but we still pick it up. It has hurt us a little bit that Josh Hartman isn't with us, but our backup running backs have done a good job. And there's somehow only two minutes left in this second quarter. So we might as well make this the final drive of it. John Davis almost got out of there, but I'm almost glad he didn't because I I want to run down some of this clock and that'll guarantee if we score Ohio State doesn't get it back with that much time remaining but now we have to step it up because it's third and four and they aren't going to be able to stop John Davis he takes us inside their red zone we have complete control and even though we aren't blown out Ohio State it almost feels like we are but maybe that's just because I'm not even worried about the number two team in the country and that's because as of recently they've never given us a challenge I guess they could technically still get points before the end of this half but we're just going to almost get the sack and this could be another interception but no instead they somehow did 
did reel it in and their field goal is going to be missed. I don't know why the computer's kickers have been this bad, but it's clear that nobody else in the Big Ten is recruiting kickers and we get the ball to start the second half, so we have an opportunity to take a three possession lead on the Buckeyes. I just realized that this team is literally playing like Iowa does, but we have just enough success offensively to where we can get wins and that's honestly all that you need. We still have never had a shutout in school history, but this could be it. And honestly, that is my goal. I want to see that happen here at Grand Rapids. I am going to pitch this last second and we just got to recover this fumble. We're picking it up with our offensive lineman and he's going to take it to the 15. Freshman Daryl Brigham just came up clutch and I should have known better than to toss it there, but I thought we could have taken advantage of it. John Davis goes down, but he is holding his chest and not moving. So I really need to start sliding with our star. It's so hard to do it because I know he can make a man miss and get us some extra yardage on certain plays. They're going to get a lot here, but they're already behind by 17 and now we forced a third and five. Knowing that we can win even with our backups just elevated my confidence a ton in this team. And I think when you play with no fears, you end up performing so much better because I just trust our guys to make a play like that and set up another long third down. I'm hoping we actually hold them again, but it looks like they're going up the middle with Burke and they keep getting us with those runs. That's the one thing that we haven't been doing a good job of stopping, but we've locked this up. And on second and 14, they mixed in a little bit of play action, which is going to get them like eight or nine. Now it is third down, and I thought they were going to go with another quarterback draw, so I was prepared for it. We should have had that pick, but we didn't get it. And why are they punting us the ball back? They should be going for it right now. This could legitimately be our first shutout in school history. We have to make it happen, and I'm going to milk this fourth quarter. You all are literally going to see me hand it off time and time again to try and seal it. And I think the only thing that'll stop us from doing it is if we score a touchdown too quickly, where we almost could have done that here. It's going to be hard to not take it, though, if they give it to us, and John Davis can always make a play happen out of nothing like this. He has gotten around the defense, and he might as well take this down to the 10. If they're going to give it to us, I can't pass up on the big runs, and that's why I don't slide with John Davis, because he can pull stuff like that off, and it's about time that he runs this in for a touchdown. That's his first one of the day, but he has 167 rushing yards, and here we go. It is our time to shine. We cannot give up points to the Buckeyes. We have done so well all game, but now we have to stop them again, and they're going to our 40. So the pressure is really on to make this the first shutout in school history, and we could have forced a fumble. All they had to do was give that one to Kyle Patrick, but he was all over the screen, making it a third and 11, where they just have slants out there on the field, and they just have one play left. We just have to stop them one final time. They cannot pick up this first down. I'm all over that slant, and there's too many defenders in the area. That's it. We have held the Buckeyes, and Grand Rapids is a few plays away from having their first shutout in school history. Just go down, Davis. They're not burning any timeouts, so that's going to be it. And the fact that we just did that versus the number two team on the road is crazy. John Davis barely even had to throw the ball because we ran it so well as a team. And when you look at the rest of our schedule, you would assume that we're going to go into the playoffs undefeated. Now, there are a couple of those teams that could give us issues, but things are looking really good for this program. And I think this is the week we get Josh Hartman back while Illinois is missing their starting running back. So maybe we can get back to back shutouts. But before we finish the rest of the year, a word from Prize Picks, today's video sponsor. The Super Bowl last night was amazing, and I came away winning this entry on Prize Picks. But now that there's no longer football to place entries with, I had to pivot over to the NBA where Prize Picks has a discount on Kyrie. Victor's also struggled to hit his point projection as of recently, so I'm going to pair my Kyrie pick with fading him, and I'm confident that I'm about to triple my entry fee. If you want to copy or fade me or just want some free cash to start out with on Prize Picks, code BORDER, the first link in my description, will double your initial deposit up to $100, and they're available in 31 different states, so make sure that you play responsibly, and let's see how the rest of the season plays out. Well, 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 look who is out there taking this handoff, and he might be a bit slow. He's just coming back from injury, but I'm glad to see him out there on the field, where our offense is on a third and 14 already. Surely we're not about to start struggling versus one and four Illinois, and seriously, we should not have missed that pass, and now we have to punt it back to them. They almost blocked the punt, and Barber is going to get back to this ball, but it only rolls to the 33. I came into this game expecting to dominate them, and we still could, but we're not going to make the tackle. Chuck Barber just got thrown to the ground twice, and are you serious? At this point in the series, we should not be getting thrown around like that, but we have forced a third and five where they just go with the halfback screen, and we make the tackle. That means we're getting the ball back, and hopefully we don't struggle offensively as much this time around, but those pitches are risky, and I'm just going to let Josh Hartman work out of Wildcat, but he is not going to make it to the marker. All right, another third down. This one is a lot closer and more manageable to pick up, though. We are going to pitch it over to Sean Kelly, and he gets us to the 40. Now we can start to open up things a little bit more. I wanted to pass on first down just to see if we could get to midfield, and that's a lot better from John Davis after missing that corner route, but they were prepared for him to get the ball there, so Josh Hartman keeps it for himself, setting up a third and seven where my goal is to roll out to the right, throw this ball on the run, but they were all over what I wanted, and I didn't even look for anything else. The reason is if we had like a second longer, we probably would have had a touchdown, but with this punt, they're going to fumble it. Now they've recovered it, but 
it's all good because the ref still threw a flag, which brings them back. And I'm shocked that they committed clipping in such a short time frame, but we are going to get over to right to make this tackle. And I am having a blast just getting stop after stop. Now it is third and nine. We just have to make sure the fighting line. I don't pick it up, but I usered that incorrectly. And even though I was expecting slants, I should have guarded their best wide receiver. Now they're taking it inside our 40. So we better start to step up. And with this run to Owen, we blew it up. That is exactly what I'm talking about. And some of our block sheds this year have been incredible. Well, it's second and 11. I was ready for the quarterback draw if they pulled it off and I was on that receiver, but there was no animation to get the pick and they've kept it on the option where Kyle Patrick brings him down. The linebacker better win defensive player of the year because I swear he's been like everywhere and he's made for an amazing user over the middle of the field on third and seven, we get the sack. So they're going to have to settle for three and we'll see if they've recruited a kicker, which they have. We've gotten to play against a lot of bad ones, but the fighting line, I make sure to have a good one. So we actually find ourselves trailing to a one and four team in the second quarter, but Sean Kelly makes another catch and I'm sure that we're going to eventually figure things out. We are the better team on paper and John Davis is going to break free. Just one guy to beat. This is exactly what I'm talking about. We're reaching the end zone. Now our defense might be tired because they have to get back out onto the field already, but we're all over them. And on second and 10, they're just going to hand it off up the middle where Owen gets a few. All right, that sets up a third and seven. I just have to make sure that none of these routes get open. They do have their halfback open underneath and we just didn't generate any pressure, but we were still able to get the stop. And Jay Atkins is going to do a little back juke to see if he can get anything on this return. All he needs is a couple of blocks. He hasn't been getting many touches since he's the backup. And now we have Josh Hartman again, but I do miss using Atkins because he filled in a lot better than I thought he would. And I'm giving him chances to be out there on the field, but they're just sticking with him on the option where we are not going to go anywhere. That makes it third and eight. And with John Davis, I think I had something open on the right side of the field. I should have looked at it because what I did was not the right move. And yes, I have run the fake punt because I want to trust Jared Lilly to make the throw. And we finally run a successful fake punt. That is yet to happen before in this series, but now it's the finale. Unless we don't win at all, and then there's going to be a secret part 11 that you all don't know about. But either way, it's still going to be titled the finale, and we're going to get the first. I've been very patient, even though there's not that much time left on the clock. Now John Davis has to step up for us, and that's what he does with his legs. I mean, we could just pass, but everybody in the stadium's expecting that, so we'll just gash them. And we're going to be starting the third quarter on defense where we stop the run. So even though we had a slow start, things aren't looking good for Illinois, because now it is third and 15. All we have to do is make sure that we don't give up anything deep, and their quarterback's just scared of throwing the ball. We'd also somehow recover their punt for a touchdown, and that's what I get for simming the return. I don't know how it happened, but now we're up by 18. So most likely, we're just going to close this one out as well. And the last matchup that I'm really worried about against Notre Dame is coming the following week. How did they pick up this first? And I guess that makes up for the fact that I did sim for a touchdown, but I highly doubt it's going to get them back into this game because they're going to need a lot. And on third and five, I'm going to try to get the user interception with Kyle Patrick, but they just hit their flat instead. So they're honestly starting to put together a decent drive, but they still have like 45 yards to go if they want to reach the end zone and there's nobody on this side of the field to stop their quarterback besides Thompson who got run over. I cannot believe that our safety just got done that dirty, but that is simply embarrassing. And we better make a defensive stand soon. They hand it off. We're all over it. So we should be fine, but they're going to run it again. And this time they've gashed us for a touchdown. However, he might've been down a little short because the refs wanted to review this and he was. I highly doubt that that's going to make much of a difference as they literally just punched it in on the next play, but this one is not over and John Davis is getting a big run. It looks like he's gone. There's not a defender in sight. And where are they at? Okay, finally someone trying to catch him. For a one and four team, the fighting Illini have done their best, but there's a limit to what they can do. That should have been picked. And our defense is starting to look like they did last year, but they've had such a good season, so I can't complain. And what a way to end the third quarter. If we can just get a stop here, I'd consider this one pretty much over and I stuck with that route, but they are going to pick it up to right. So the computer keeps making amazing plays. And on fourth and inches, I've got to send the blitz, which ended up working. Well, at this point, we should be able to run out most of the clock with Josh Hartman getting a decent carry. And it's been nice to have him back. But up until this part of the game, he clearly hasn't been at 100%, but now he might be because he just had back-to-back -back big runs and now John Davis keeps it going for eight. One of the two is going to end up finishing this drive off for us by reaching the end zone, but maybe it'll be Holiday. And Kevin Holiday, the freshman, has put us up by 25. Ever since then, Illinois has been driving down the field though, so I'm hoping that we can hold him one final time. And I'm trying to give up as few points as possible this season, but they're about to score another touchdown. The game has been over, but it hasn't stopped them from making plays. And we just have to recover the onside kick to seal it, which we're able to do with Kelly. You know what? For not having a good first quarter, I should just be happy that we were able to come away with a win by this many points. John Davis gets us even more. And I'm looking for that one final stop where it's a halfback screen. Kyle Patrick gets the interception and he was able to take it into the end zone to make the score even worse. I don't think the final score of this one's going to tell the whole story, but we've got to talk about John Davis who didn't pass for much again, but on the ground, he rushed for so much. So 
I'm a little sad to not see him anywhere up here in the Heisman race, but he's missed a game, and how is California ranked above us? We've literally beat four top 12 teams, and Illinois put up the most points against us, but either way, we are in the toughest conference in the country, and I don't know what else we could do to be number one. The only category our defense isn't first in is pass, and it looks like Notre Dame's missing their running back, so we could have another great day, but since we're playing on the road, I am afraid it could be a bit of a challenge, and I guess we'll just see what happens on first and 10. They're taking this first handoff for like 20 yards, maybe 25 against us, so we need to make sure that that doesn't happen again, and we are going to do it on this play. The Irish were one of the first schools that we upset, so I've always felt confident playing against them, and it is already third and nine where they're probably just going to go underneath to Davis, who gets them the first. I'm a little disappointed that we gave that up, but at the end of the day, there's still going to be plenty of time left in this game, and I'm about to start sending the house at their quarterback, which ended up not doing anything for us. He has way too much time back there, and he is going to have a corner route, but he doesn't take it. Look at our man-to-man -man coverage locking up and really. There were two guys in the area, but neither of them stuck with him, and I told you all I was worried about this game, so hopefully we can just figure things out with this offensive drive ourselves, and this ball is just staying in Josh Davis's hands. I want him to have to make the play, but now it is third and six. We have Ryan Thompson open up the seam, and he is going to break that tackle plus get an almost good block. He is still going to be free, and he takes it inside the 10. That is what we needed to swing things in our favor. Now we have a lot of momentum, and we're just going to quarterback sneak it until Davis gets into the end zone. This is the first time I felt like we could have a shootout on our hands, and now on second and 12, they just hand it off where we make the tackle. In previous seasons, I can guarantee that they would have broken that for the first, and on this long third down, they're not picking it up. So that's why our defense is so special, and let's see what Jay Atkins can do on this return. He's going to juke to the right side of the field, but that defender is very quick, so we'll simply have to return to running the ball where John Davis continues to impress everybody. I don't know if he's going to be able to get back into the Heisman race after missing a game, but if he continues to have some good stats, he might be able to, and with some blocks here, he might have another touchdown. Number 25 is trying to catch him, though, and are you kidding me? They almost did. Notre Dame definitely has some speed out there on the field, so that's the only reason that they're competing, but I'm still expecting our defense to get a stop on this drive, and from there, maybe we'll run away with things. All it takes is one or two holds, and Kyle Patrick's going to get over to Davis, so here we go. It is the third and 10 that we wanted. Nothing can get open, and we were all over it. They're also opting to punt it instead of going for it there, which I personally don't think is the best of moves. We're going to let it bounce, and this is a great opportunity to take a two-possession lead. I'm even going to mix in a pass with John Davis because I didn't think they'd be expecting it and that's why it worked. So now they don't know what's coming and with this handoff we get a few more. I'm still scared of running play action but I want to give it a shot and it looks like they just broke those blocks but we're still going to throw it on the run and look at that pass from John Davis. This is what we've been needing. He's going to get another touchdown and I'm ready to start opening up the playbook with more play action. Here on second and seven they're trying to mimic our offense but it isn't going to work for them the same way and we're just going to play some zone coverage on third and long. There's no way that we should give anything up, but we're still going to. But it's all good. We need to have some competitive games anyway. I've sent in a little bit of pressure, and that's all it took for them to throw it away. I don't know why, but every time I only send in a few like I did on this one, it just feels like they have too much time back there. And if the zones aren't going to guard their man, it's back to man-to-man -man coverage where everything is put in a box. This is why we run that, but they, again, have a lot of time. Carter runs, and this is going to be floated to McCauley. He wasn't able to make the catch, but at the end of the day, it's all good. Now they're going with the halfback screen. We are all over it, and we're running straight man-to-man -man. on third and 13. We just have to make sure they don't get it, and they're not going to. There's a chance their kicker could miss it, and it looks like this one is going to go in, but that leaves John Davis a lot of time on the clock. They've sent in a blitz. The left side of the field is wide open if they're going to run man-to-man, -man, and John Davis might be gone to the house on the first play of this drive. He's just too quick. We've already rushed for 2,000 yards at this point in the year, and that says a lot about this team since we have had so many different players out there. We almost got the sack, and I'll mix up the coverage just for this play so we're not too predictable, but the zones hurt us and they're going to get to about midfield. They honestly might be getting some points before the half if we're not careful, and I did see that route get open, but they tried to test Sanders, and this is exactly why our pass defense isn't ranked number one. On second and three, I do want to send in a little bit of a blitz, but instead I've decided to play coverage and Kyle Patrick's all over that ball, but we didn't get an animation, and they've left us 20 seconds in the half. I am still confident that we can get some points. John Davis is having a career day, so I'm not going to stop using him. I'm going to give him an opportunity opportunity to go deep where he is going to find Walters and we just need like 10 or 15 more yards in a span of like six seconds which we're going to get. That's how you make sure that you go up by 14 to end the first half if that goes in and I was worried that Aaron Adams hooked it for a split second. Now we start the third quarter with the ball and we have had zero issues moving it at all so you got to wonder if Notre Dame is ever going to figure things out defensively and Josh Hartman just spun out multiple guys. I think if I do another dynasty series like this in the future I'm going to have to make sure that running the ball isn't so much more effective than passing because it honestly has been. We're about to go 
for another touchdown. Look at that. While when it comes to us throwing, we're still having missed passes and stuff in season 10. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything else like this again before the release of the new game, but we're still far away from July. So there is some time to kill. And I just can't believe that they're actually giving us a new game. We've all been waiting for it forever. Those graphics are going to be amazing and Carter's still standing, but our third guy was able to bring him down. And I'm hoping that we're able to seal it on this drive if possible. But Ryan Carter's had zero issues when it comes to hitting tight windows. And this is going to be the most points that we've ever given up in a game this year. I don't know what changed, but ever since our shutout against number two Ohio State on the road, our defense hasn't been as tough and that's a major problem. Maybe they just played that well because they had to in order for us to win. And now that we're fully healthy, they can relax a bit, but I want to continue to shut teams out and make plays, but we're giving that up. So the Irish have stayed in it for a little bit longer and we're just going to continue to feed John Davis who somehow faked them out. I don't know what happened mid run there, but it looks like he faked a throw even though he was well past the line of scrimmage. And you have got to love how well we are performing offensively against the Irish. He is getting even more yards. So on the ground, he's going to have another big rushing day, but he's also had his best game of the season through there. And it took us forever to find a groove with this offense, but I think we have found out what works best for us as John Davis breaks free and he is gone. Notre Dame is back down by three possessions almost instantly. And we got to wrap this one up because it should be over at this point. We've been playing way too well, but they keep finding ways to pass it. And if anything, that lets me know we're in trouble if we play an air raid offense in the playoffs. So we've got to figure out how to stop it. And it might be through blitzing because it is going to work in this situation. And now they're stuck on a fourth and two where they're simply going to run the ball. And are you kidding me? Carter is still going. He gets the first. Then before their next play, they'd have a false start. So they didn't open up this set of downs in the best of ways, but it's not going to matter. And it turns out that we don't have as good of man-to-man -man coverage as I thought. We've just played against some weaker offenses. I mean, we are literally getting shredded right now. So I'm glad we're playing Iowa next. And there's a turnover. So I can finally say it's over. They're not going to take us down. And John Davis honestly might be closing in on a school record with the amount of rushing yards he has. He's going to break off another one and we might as well continue to keep it on the ground. I am going to skip around a bit. This one is over, but we are watching a record be set right now. I mean, he's over 260 yards already, but he still wants to tack on one more touchdown and it might happen on this play as he is going to fight all the way. That's a perfect way to end this game and he's got to be in the Heisman race after a stat line like this. So it's no surprise he's leapfrogged all the way up to number two. And he also set the school rushing touchdown and rushing yards record in a game during that performance. It still wasn't enough to get us ranked number one in the country, but maybe a win at Iowa will, and we just have to finish the year strong because I want to go into the playoffs as the number one seed. It looks like we're going to have perfect weather for this one, and it's going to be a battle of whoever has the best defense. So this could be a very low scoring game. It was last season, and we've already sacked their quarterback. Now it is second and 13, where they're just going to go with the halfback draw over to Lee, which we're on. So we could get them off the field on this third and 10, but we're going to leave the hitch route open. What are we doing with our zone coverage? The zones that are supposed to guard that area don't do their job. So it's back to running man-to-man -man coverage, and that didn't really go that well for us either. On third and four, I'm sure they're going to have somebody open if we can't get enough pressure. That's going to be out of bounds, though. So we are going to get the stop, and the fact that he couldn't get his feet in there is a massive deal. We're still going to have to take advantage of it, though, and it looks like they have left Kevin Holiday open, who's going to get us the first down. And let's see if John Davis can pick up where he left off running for like six. Now we're going to get it to Jay Atkins, who deserves to get some touches after how we filled in. And so far, I'd say things are looking pretty smooth versus the Hawkeyes. John Davis is going to get some great blocks and there is not a player in sight that's going to be able to catch him. That's exactly what we needed. It looks like Patrick Lee's taking this handoff and can somebody just bring him down? It drives me nuts to see us do stuff like that, but at least we are doing well with our man-to-man -man coverage. All that Goff can do is try to scramble. And I think it's about time we try to dial up a blitz, but they just went with the run and we have missed the tackle with Danny King. I cannot make that same mistake twice, but it looks like I did. We still stop him. And on second and 13, they are opting into passing where they made the one-handed catch. All right, now it is third and eight. I don't know what they have out there, but I think they're going to get a route bounce. They just had too much time. Sanders cannot stick with keys. And I clicked on to make the interception, but he didn't grab it. Well, we both have seven points already. I didn't expect Iowa to get some that fast, but it is what it is because we can respond back here. And John Davis is going to have another good running lane where he gets like 10 more. He has been a cheat code on the ground. We're going to see if they're able to stop the run and they did a very good job there. So now that it's second and 15, we should probably start passing the ball and that's going to be caught by our tight end. Once again, he makes the right play when we need him to, and now he's going to get more. But we should also get Josh Hartman going, who hasn't been the same since coming back from injury. And it just hit me that Iowa is ranked 15th in the country at five and four. They must have four really good losses because that's a little ridiculous. And John Davis just fumbled it. I don't know what he was thinking there, but now we have to make the right read and they've boxed up everything, throw it away. The odds of us picking up this third and 24 aren't great. So we're just going to take a sack and then send Aaron Adams out there to drill the 48 
58 yarder, which is in. Part of me wanted to try and throw for it, but I would have probably turned the ball over and we don't have a zone on that part of the field. So Iowa's offense is looking kind of good versus us. And can we stop Lee? He is still going. I mean, the second we take a step forward offensively, our defense then takes a step back, but maybe we'll stop them on this third and two and we're all over it. Whenever the motion's coming, you can always run commit. And we have two minutes before the end of the half to get some more points. Our last drive might've stalled out, but I want to make sure we get a touchdown here. And Josh Hartman has a lot of green grass in front of him. He's going to make it past the 40. That is a great way to start this drive. And now we're going to have our tight end on the seam to the 15. So Nicholas McNeil has set us up nicely and they were ready for that. We might need to go back to passing if we want to reach the end zone here. And that was almost picked. So it is third and 13. This is going to be a very tight window and that zone did not move. We are very lucky that we're able to still get a field goal. And I'm sure that I was just going to take it to the half with this run, but they are breaking free and you've got to be kidding me. King is going to have to track him down or else he's gone. With one play, they were able to get themselves in field goal range and we're not going to be able to force an interception. So they're going to be able to just take their three. And I'm not happy with that ending to the first half. We should still be fine though. We have a lead and the ball where Kevin Holiday makes the catch. And now we're going to give it to Josh Hartman who didn't get the best blocks on this play. But even though he didn't, he was still able to get us six yards. And now John Davis is just going to pitch it last second over to Pat Walters and he takes it to the 35. Our rushing attack is lethal and they're going to have to commit to stopping the run because we're just going to keep pounding it down their throats and Jay Atkins gets us the first. I'm also going to try mixing in the play action just to see if we can get somebody open and we don't. So it's back to going on the ground and Josh Hartman gets us like five. Third and seven now. We are just going to be patient and throw it over that zone. Holiday gets us into the end zone and the freshman wide receiver might be the best one that we recruited. The other guys just haven't made as much of an impact. And on first and 10, I've decided to send the house at them, but they were prepared for it to get the ball out super quickly. And can we just bring him down? These Iowa running backs are very good. They have two of them that are star players, but they're trailing by 10. So they won't be able to rely on the run forever. And my guess is they still do on this play, which was right, but we had nobody there to stop the option. So they're going to move the chains. We are prepared for it this time though. And that is when they hit us with the play action. We're going to get the interception though. McCauley comes away with the ball and I ran commit. I can't believe we still made a play even with that being true. And it is about time our defense starts getting turnovers again. We started the season getting them all the time, but as of recently, they've slowed down and Josh Hartman just continues to fight. So we are setting ourselves up nicely to close this one out. We're going to pitch it last second to him and that's going to get us like five. We might as well try to pass as well. It's man-to-man -man coverage and the corner route should have been open, but that ball was not placed properly. So they're going to get the turnover on us. That was such a stupid mistake to make, but I thought we had Pat Walters and on second and 10, they aren't going to run the ball. It's actually another pass, but he continues to throw it away. So I was off is really struggling on third down. We just have to make sure that they don't pick this up and who was supposed to be on Goodman. I mean, we're good since it was marked as a fourth and inches, but there was a zone that was on that side of the field. And when it came to stopping them, he just decided to disappear. I think our best option on this drive is to just run it for as long as we can, because any time that we have been stopped, it's always been when we're passing. And this is the final play of the third quarter where Josh Hartman just got destroyed. I guess we're going to have no choice but to punt the ball back to Iowa. And with this bounce, I think that's going straight to the end zone. They've picked it up though and they're taking it to the 45. Even in the fourth quarter, it's still not going to be over. And we've done a poor job offensively, but it's my first game of the day. So we still need to get into a rhythm and we're locking that run up. All right, this is a big third down and I don't know who I'm stuck on, but I'm not able to guard their running back. They're picking up the first and this is a run heavy formation. So we decided to stack the box. Now they're going to go back to the same thing on second and 12, but it doesn't work. And they're forced to pass on this third and 15 where I'd love if they didn't get into field goal range, but some of these routes have way too long to get open and that's done. I was worried for a split second, but now they have no choice but to go for it on fourth and 15. And I've seen some stuff get open. They're going to throw it straight to Bobby Thompson. He comes away with interception. There we go. That was exactly what we were looking for in that situation. And now we can just run through some clock. It's not pretty, but we're about to take down the number 15 team. And I hope that we're able to get back to being at the number one spot. John Davis is gone and nobody is going to catch him. I swear at the end of some of these games, we always make the score look a lot worse than it actually was. And you'd think that it would help with our ranking, but it really hasn't. We almost got over to Lee on that one and they get the first. He's still going. Come on. I mean, it is now season 10 and we're still experiencing broken tackle after broken tackle. And I want to hold Iowa to just 10 points. I don't want to give up anything here. This should be an interception. Come on, Williams, make a play on it. We've had too many games in a row where our opponents scored too much and that throw is off target. So now it is third and 10 and Goff is just going to run. We should have been prepared. I mean, we have seen that play time and time again. And on this one, we're going to come away with another interception. It is linebacker Jay Green going down at midfield. So this is exactly what we were looking for from our defense. And we should be going on to the Big Ten Championship unless we lose next week. I only say that because Maryland gave us a scare last year. I'm 
not sure why it ended up being so close, but we can't underestimate anybody, and John Davis was incredible on the ground again. When it comes to the passing game, our stats aren't the best, but we're rushing for like 300 yards a game, so it really doesn't matter. And after California lost to Michigan, it looks like we're back up at the number one spot. Our division's still going strong as well, as we have three of the top four teams, but no matter what happens here, we're locked into the Big Ten Championship, and that's because we have the tiebreaker over Ohio State, so I knew getting a win there was going to always be a big deal, and the fact that we're still undefeated after having to start backups for a bit is insane. I'm hoping that we're able to still win it all. We are playing Maryland in the snow, which should be good, and it makes me so sad that this could be one of the final home games in this Grand Rapids series. Hulu Field has done us well. We've only lost a couple of times ever since we've constructed new stands here, and look at this. Kevin Holiday's already getting us to like the 40-yard line. We're definitely taking Maryland a bit more seriously this season because of what they did to us last year, and this first drive continues to go extremely well for us, so we're going to keep moving it, and I see no reason to not continue to keep things on the ground, but they were all over that one, so now it's second and 13, where Josh Hartman's face looks a little bit blue, and we have got to pick up this third and nine, where they have gotten a lot of pressure in. John Davis is trying to escape the pocket. I don't know if he's going to make it all the way to the marker, but he did, and it is ridiculous how fast our pocket can collapse sometimes, but we're going to the end zone, and freshman Sean Kelly is able to hold on to the football. Maryland almost got the stop on us, but in the end, we were able to come away with seven points, and their first offensive play went extremely well for them. They're also rushing for more, so I think we should dial up a blitz on second and seven, where they're going to break a tackle, but it ended up being okay, and on third and long, they're just going to go with the wide receiver screen that is boxed up. Now we have it back again, and we could take a two-possession lead, which I would love to do, and at some point, I'm sure that we're going to break off a long run in this game, but it still hasn't happened, which is one of my main focuses, because I want John Davis to win the Heisman, and I got the coach hint that this was going to be cover two, so we're going to have somebody deep open up the seam, but he missed his target, and now it is third and 11, where we just have to go over the middle of the field, and Thompson reeled it in. Once again, the Terrapins were about to get a stop, but we pulled away on third and long, and look at this run. Josh Hartman just annihilated like three different players. And to start the second quarter, we have it with John Davis, but their defenders are ready. If they're going to continue to stop the run in this way, we might be better off passing as this one's going to take us to the 20-yard line. And we have eight first downs to their one so far, so we have been dominating, but we still have work to do, and that's not it. I think it's going to be interesting to see in the postseason how teams adapt to us if they can stop the run like Maryland is. And Josh Hartman should be able to take this one in if the blocks can line up, but they didn't. They're clearly set up to try and stop the run, so we're just going to pass it, and Kevin Holiday got open, which means it's already 14 to 0, and we just got to make the tackle on Bush, but he stiff armed one of our players. I definitely remember him from last season. It looks like they've gone four verticals, and Jay Green has gotten burnt by their wide receiver. That was a mismatch, and I messed it up by taking away the zone. Now it's first and goal, and they're probably going to have somebody open unless we can get somebody in quick enough. They just had so much time back there and catch it. We literally could have held them, but instead, the Terrapins are going to run it, and there's the touchdown. That's frustrating because there's been a couple of times where they've come pretty close to stopping our offense. And I don't normally do this, but I want to try and take a deep shot to that post where that was a bad idea. We need to be able to get our passing game down so we can pull stuff off like that in the playoffs. And it looks like they're sticking with zone coverage, so our tight end is going to run right by everybody and he is gone. Nicholas McNeil has not gotten that many looks this season, but as of recently, he's made every catch that we've been looking for. And come on, Williams, just make the tackle. Oh gosh, this is really bad. He's broken free and he's going all the way to the 40. I don't get how you have two attempts to stop somebody and you still can't do it, but that just shows that they have some really good running backs. And on second and 11, they keep it on the ground. Their quarterback has it though, so they're going to get a bit. All right, this is a huge third and nine. We cannot let them get the first, and I think they're going to attempt the field goal. It's from 50 yards out, and it's snowing hard, but it looks like it is in. And if Maryland's defense was doing what they did to us last year, they would be in a lot of trouble, but instead, John Davis is able to just run around a lot of defenders. So we are getting to about midfield, and now we're going to take our corner out. He definitely has some accuracy issues, but this time he's actually going to hook up with Kevin Holiday, who got rid of two defenders. And the freshman's got to have one of the best spin moves on this team. Their man-to-man -man coverage cannot stick with Pat Walters getting us more. And there's about 30 seconds left in the half where we're just waiting on that deep post to get hoping. Josh Hartman made the right block, and I am going to sling it to the end zone where Kelly holds on. That was a laser up the middle. And because of it, going into halftime, we're going to have an 18-point lead unless this worked out for them, and that's gone straight to Danny King. We should be able to close this out in the third quarter. But in order to do so, we will need our defense to step up a couple of times and the man coverage is not sticking with them. We should probably start blitzing more against the Terrapins, which we did on this play. And we have to keep applying pressure on their quarterback. I sent a lot here, but it has taken a lot of time to get in as well. And he throws it straight to Jeremy Williams, who has come away with the interception. And it looks like he might be able to return it. 
all the way as he's into the crib. We have been waiting for a play like that, so I'm glad that he was able to pull it off for us. And eventually, we would get Maryland to a third and 16, where they're gonna have a hard time picking this up, but they actually did. I wanted to say we're putting things away, but they've continued to move it down the field, and there's the touchdown. So once again, our defense has given up 17 points, and that's just not very good for us. We should not be doing that. Josh Hartman goes to the 40. And I've already got two clock on. We're up by three possessions, but I wanna win by more. Our drive has still stayed alive up until the fourth quarter, and we're gonna get this third and 10. So I know I haven't shown much here, but it's just been us running down the clock. And I just felt like it was over ever since we got that interception, but they're about to get the sack. So now it is third and 16. They're going with man-to-man -man coverage and they've gotten some pressure. And I just got to run with John Davis, who's going to use his legs to reach the end zone. That should do it for us. And this was a quarterback draw. So we're going to stop them again. And from there, we'd run out the rest of the clock. John Davis also had five touchdowns and I had a good time passing with him again. He can have success through the air, but he's just better on the ground. And it's time for the last war on route 131. They have a couple of decent offensive players, and throughout this series, all the smaller Michigan schools did, so they recruited well, but not well enough to keep up with Grand Rapids, and I hope that we're able to take them down one final time. If they upset us, that would be a big problem. They're still breaking tackles, but J.P. Brown can only go so far, and they want to run the ball. My goal is to end this game in the first quarter with a 21-point lead, and we got the stop there, so we didn't even need the help from the refs, and it's time for John Davis to put up some good numbers. I would like 200 rushing yards out of him with another 200 passing yards. That is the end goal of the day, but we could have had a touchdown there if I didn't get greedy, and it's so nice to be playing against a weaker school after facing tough opponents all season. Walters look quick, and I don't know where that speed has been all season, but I would have fed him to it more if he looked like that all the time, and John Davis is going to get us to the 10. This is where we have to finish things off, and I'm not pitching it, because like I said, I want to see our quarterback win another Heisman, and this is the easiest opponent he'll face all year, but we have to get into the end zone on third and 10, and we do. There's Nicholas McNeil again, our tight end, making a play, and we saw that they ran the ball a lot on the last drive, so I was wasn't expecting play action, but then J.P. Brown just took off. The fact that he's a scrambler makes him a little bit more difficult to stop than other quarterbacks, but one way to counter that is just send in blitzes in their direction and pitch it to me. Come on. Third and six now. We'll see if we're able to generate some pressure. We get the sack, and Alan Brown, our defensive tackle, was the one at the end of it. And then Jay Atkins returned it for a touchdown. We have had more sim punt returns than actual returns this season, and even though I know we're going to blow them out, that still bugs me because you never know what could happen. Here on first and ten, I am going to send in some pressure at J.P. Brown, but he he's able to find Edwards, and they're putting together a drive on us. I still think we're about to stop them as we're just going to run command, but we should not have 14 points right now. And on second and 11, they just went with some slants, they're running backs open, and we are not going to bring him down. He's fighting for a first. If they keep this close, I am going to feel very guilty about that sim punt return for a touchdown. And they're putting up a fight in this final war on route 131. At least we got the sack there, and we also shot the gap, but we missed the tackle. So it's third down. I've been told a draw is coming, and we're all over it. This team is definitely ready to just get into some playoff matchups, and I'm literally just going to throw it all over them. If they think they can run man-to-man -man coverage on us, they're just going to be mistaken. We're not going to struggle offensively versus their terrible defense. I know that for a fact, and look at John Davis. He is just able to run around everybody. He almost broke this. I mean, I probably should have slid there to avoid him getting injured, but it's all good. We're going to pick up another first down, and I just don't see Western Michigan sticking with us because we're flying down the field, but we're taking the sack, and this is why I normally do not pass this much, but we continue to do it, and Ryan Thompson dropped it. All right, it is third and 16 now. We're gonna have to thread this one up the middle, which we do. And now we'll rely on John Davis to take it in. We just need to come away with a defensive stop now to put this one away. JP Brown goes down. And I'm so confident that we're gonna score on every single offensive possession. We do need to hold them on this third and five though, and we get the sack. So now I'm gonna take a timeout. And I won't be simming any punt returns in the playoffs because I have seen that they could go for touchdowns and I don't wanna get any points like that during those games. We should have to work for all of them, but it hasn't been that difficult to work for them against Western Michigan and there's a good run. And as much as I'm enjoying destroying team after team, believe it or not, that's not great for content on YouTube. It feels good to know that we're this dominant over some teams, but now we have to get some more competition going into the playoffs. And let's just say that in the third quarter, we are going to continue to run away with this game. We're going to end up winning 48 to three in the final war on route 131 ever. And that's the perfect result going into the Big Ten Championship. John Davis didn't put up the stat line that I was hoping he would, but it was still pretty solid going 12 for 14 and then on the ground having three rushing touchdowns as well. In order to win the Heisman, though, he's going to have to play well in the conference championship, and Grand Rapids obviously won our division where we're going to be playing against Washington. You can tell that the rest of the country really isn't that good with Michigan being the number two team at 10-2, and two, and it's time to take on the Huskies. We still have the number one defense, and it looks like their quarterback's out for the season, so even though they're playing for a spot in the playoffs, it's going to be hard for them to beat us and get in with a backup. The goal is to send blitzes at him throughout this entire game, but they've already pitched it for a nice, sizable run on our defense, and if they're going to 
to run the option. We'll just run commit versus them, but their quarterback has kept it and nobody was over there to stop him from getting more. There's a chance that Ron Ralph could give us some issues and he's only one overall worse than their starting quarterback. So it's not like we're facing off against somebody that's terrible. It is third and 14 though. They have a long way to go if they want to pick up this first down and I should have been there because now it's fourth and inches and they kept it up the middle. I can't believe that we got the stop, but I risked it all run committing and if they would have passed there, they probably would have had a touchdown on us. We've played so well all season that I don't see us losing and I can't even remember the last time we've gotten a scare. It's just been so simple to dominate versus some of these teams. Look at that. And John Davis has got to have more rushing yards this year than he has passing yards. I do think the fact that we can mix in the pass every so often is going to make us almost unstoppable too, but Josh Hartman couldn't hang on and our pass blocking is atrocious compared to our run blocking. But all of a sudden it's fourth and one and we're taking this straight up the middle with John Davis where he is going to get it for us. I gotta say Washington's defense is looking all right because they almost got us off of the field, but I'm sure they're going to regret not committing harder to stopping that fourth and one because now we have it to the five. And with the inverted veer play call, we are going to take it into the end zone. It was hard to get those points, but we did come away with all seven and now they're running it again to the 35 or the 40, which is why I need to be more aggressive with our run defense. But Kyle Patrick just missed their running back and he is gone to the 30 now. We literally would have had him stopped and that is so unfortunate. They keep it on the ground. So we've got to come out in some run D and that's what we did on this play. Now it is third and eight and there is nobody that's coming over to this part of the field. I'm just going to sit still. I don't want to mess something up and I didn't click on. It worked out as we're able to force them into a fourth down and we're inside a dome. So I would assume that their kicker is going to drill this, but he missed. It looked like it was good for like 90% of that, but then it took a bend. And with how solid the Husky offense has looked, it's shocking that they still don't have any points. We've made the big plays when they've mattered though. And that's why we have a seven point lead at this point in the game. Kevin Holiday is going to rush and then do that great spin move. And you know, it's coming from him every time we get the ball into his hands, but maybe we won't do it on this play because I just wanted to make sure we got a good gain there. And now, you know what? We're going to try it again and he can't get free. The Huskies better hold strong if they want to stop us because we are nearing the end zone and their defender just tripped up. I hope you all saw what I saw because he was about to make the tackle, but then he just fell over and it sure does not feel like it, but we are sitting with a 14 point lead over Washington. This should be intercepted. And if Grant Sanders wasn't so bad at catching the ball, he would have a ton of them in his career, but he's still been decent. And are you serious? They have another run that's going for a lot and they keep breaking tackles. Can somebody just catch him? This is honestly starting to become very difficult to figure out because every time I think we're ready to stop the run, we struggle to, and we just got to make the hit. This is a huge third and eight, but we were ready for it. And if their kicker missed again, that'd be hilarious, but he doesn't. So they've gotten it within 11 and we'll see if they can stop our offense. On second and 11, I have decided to pass. We have mixed in a lot more of those in this game, and we're just going to extend this play, try and throw it into that window. But they're saying it wasn't a catch and it doesn't hurt us to challenge this anyway. I honestly think Pat Walters brought it in and we're about to see if he was able to drag a foot. It looks like that one did not get down. Well, it is third and 11, but it's man-to-man -man coverage. So Sean Kelly was able to get open and that defender doesn't know what to do. He looks so lost there and we are just going to have to sit in the pocket, then roll out and look at Kevin Holiday. He is wide open. There's nobody on that part of the field and it looks like 35 is going to track him down, but not before we've gotten down to the 10 yard line. And I'm so glad we started passing again. It's really opened things up for our offense, but John Davis is going to have to fight his way in. And he did where he's going to set another school record with rushing touchdowns in a season. It's crazy that he has done that as a quarterback, but both him and Josh Hartman have been incredible for this program and their quarterback has stepped up. I'm just going to try to kill him with Danny King and I missed there. That is another big gain that they've had on the ground. And I saw one of our corners get burned, but Ron Ralph didn't. And I think after getting that sack, they're no longer in field goal range. We could use another on third and nine though. And I've stuck perfectly with that route. So the blitz is going to pay off. And this is a 51 yarder where it is definitely not on target. That was a great first half from Grand Rapids. And we played everything there exactly how we needed to. Josh Hartman gets tackled, but I'm confident we'll still get points on this drive. And Sean Kelly comes away with it for nothing. Well, it is third down and I'm just going to roll out and I should have taken it to him. I didn't want that zone to play it. Now we just got to float it up and this is going to be dropped. Not ideal to start the second half with a three and out, but that's what happens. Whenever we try to pass the ball, our offense isn't as successful. We get the good punt though. And they've come out in five wide, even though most of their successes come whenever they're running the ball, but I'm sure they still want to keep it on the ground some. And I was right. Here we go. Third and eight. We could get a three and out on them just like they did on us, but we aren't going to be able to make the tackle. And this better not be the start of us blowing a 21 to three lead against the Huskies. I know they only have three points, but I genuinely fear their offense. I know that they're pretty good. That could have been picked. And the amount of times that stuff like that's happening is so frustrating. At some point, I am sure we'll get our interception though. And I see that perfectly, but Kyle Patrick ended up dropping it and their slant's going to get open. That gets them a new set of downs, but we're going to shoot that gap. And on second and 12, they're hitting us with the play 
action. We have a lot of zones deep though, and this should be played by Sanders. I'm clicking on, I'm spamming triangle, but they just don't make the play. And I'll be a lot more annoyed at stuff like that happening if we have some tight playoff matchups. Right now, I'm still pretty confident that we're gonna take down Washington. I am stuck on a defensive lineman though, and they of course pick this up. So they're about to get it back within 11 points, and they had no routes on the field. That was one of the weirdest plays I've ever seen. But now all of a sudden, it's third and goal. It's a screen pass, and Kyle Patrick was there. You would think that they'd be going for this, but they're not. And that drive took them almost the entire third quarter. We just got it back again. I can't complain because it's just going to hurt them. But what I am worried about is John Davis needs to have some better stats because he is in a Heisman race. So we just got to start slinging it around with him and Sean Kelly gets it. I already feel confident in us winning, but legitimately, I just want to put up some better numbers with him and he is going to run around, get some good blocks, take it all the way to the 20, where after sliding down there, he is going to set a school record for the most rushing yards in a season. That is insane. He shattered what Demarcus Perkins did and he hasn't even played in the postseason and he was injured. So what a season for him. He just got his fourth rushing touchdown and there's the interception we were looking for. Grant Sanders snags it and he is going to be gone. It was about time he made a catch and the Huskies would only end up scoring six points on our defense. We have won the Big Ten again and what a performance from John Davis where we're about to find out if that was enough to get him the Heisman Trophy and it looks like it was. He has won it in back-to-back -back seasons. Linebacker Kyle Patrick also won the Bednarik and alongside it, he would take home the Nagurski and the Buck Kiss as well. It was a great season from him as he was the leader of our defense tied for the most sacks and had a lot of picks as well. But we got to talk about John Davis who passed for 2,000 yards less than last year but somehow still won the Heisman because he rushed for 25 touchdowns and I feel bad for any of these receivers that wanted a ton of targets. We're now headed into the playoffs as the only undefeated team and it wouldn't be an NCAA football 14 dynasty if we didn't have to play military school in one of our playoff matchups and to be honest it could go really bad for us if we're not able to stop the option. I think it's crazy how everything's come full circle though because the last time we played Army was 10 years ago and they beat us in our first season at Grand Rapids but now we have the top two defenses in the country and who would have thought we'd be meeting in the playoffs 10 years later. We're playing in the Rose Bowl but it seems like our fans have traveled pretty well and I honestly might just run commit on every single play. I mean we know exactly what's coming especially when they come out in formations like this so it's already third and long and they've somehow made things even worse for themselves. I cannot remember the last time we've seen a third and 23 but there's simply no way that they get it so we have opened things up the right way and Jay Atkins is going to catch this and try to just run to the right side of the field where he got a couple of good blocks. Now our main strategy has been to just keep it on the ground and then pitch it last second over to Josh Hartman but he didn't get much and I'm excited to try and pass a bit more because I don't think they're going to be expecting it. There's no film on us throwing it and there's a tutty. We have already gotten off to a 7-0 start and there's no longer any nerves about the playoffs. We've been here before and did they just pitch us the ball? I have never seen a player get it like that before but Jordan Williams has been incredible and Army better wake up or else they're in for a very long game. Here on third and five, we are going to pass with our Heisman winning quarterback, but then he's going to decide to take off, run, and dive in. So John Davis puts us up 14 to zero, and we'll see what Army does on this play, but we're ready for it every time. I am going to continue to run commit and just hope for the best. And I've played against these military schools before where they've destroyed us with the run, so I'm glad I know how to stop it now. It looks like they're not going to pass for anything. And Jay Atkins is going to take this return with a little bit of a back juke to get some separation. It looks like he could be gone, but number 59 didn't make the right block, and we're just going to have to score on the ground. I was wasn't expecting our first game in the playoffs to be a blowout, but it's very close to turning into one. And that's what happens when you have a lockdown defense. We're going to find Kevin Holiday to get us inside the 10. And we will see if Josh Hartman is able to take this one into the end zone himself. But the juke to the outside did not work and Pat Walters is open. He's the only OG wide receiver that's still playing for us. And it's really already 21-0 to with the game just starting a little bit ago. They don't know what to do offensively besides maybe run like this. But I hope Frank Wilson realizes we can stop that too. And I'll run commit again. I really don't care. We can guard everything if we have to. This is a pretty big third and eight because they have a chance to pick up the first and unfortunately they're going to, but they still have a long way to go if they want to get points on this drive and everything was just boxed up there. We played a perfect first quarter and on second and 10, they go with the option, which we are completely prepared for. Look at that. They're going down at the 43. I literally don't know what they could do differently. They are just getting destroyed. And this is the first time that we've won the battle up front this bad. It's very satisfying. It's literally crazy that we already have two clock on at the beginning of the second quarter and John Davis could be gone again if he can get around this defender, but he doesn't. And if we can score a touchdown here, we're pretty much going to have things sealed up. They just aren't able to do anything to stop our offense or our defense. We're just doing too well. And this is the easiest quarterfinal matchup that we could have ever gotten. With our backups out there in the second half, they were able to score 13 points, but that's still not that much. And Freddie Martin should just slide. This is getting embarrassing. We went from getting blown out in this series to now blowing teams out. And our Heisman winner had another great game. So it's on to the semis where we're playing one of these two teams and we'll see if the SEC can produce
face anything that can keep up with us. But the conference has kind of fallen off on this dynasty file, and Georgia almost blew a 35 to 0 lead, but they pulled away in overtime. It also looks like we're the only Big Ten team that's still standing, and this might be one of the final games in this Grand Rapids series. That makes me so sad, and we're facing off against the 88 overall Bulldogs. So on paper, we have a slight edge, but they're still going to be hard to take down, and Brooks has toasted Williams, our best cornerback, to start this game off. That is not what I want to see. I know Georgia's a 12 seed, but they're still going to be a good opponent, probably better than anyone we've played recently. And on second and 10, they simply hand this off. Danny King gets over to Williams, though, setting up this third and seven, where it's a halfback screen, and we are going to get over there as well. We might have given up a big pass play, but they're only getting a field goal. And it is time for two-time Heisman winner John Davis to shine as he's going to juke to the outside, and come on. If that block would have held for a second longer, I think he would have been gone there. He's going to pitch this one to Josh Hartman, though, and come on, let's get the block there. Now we're going to mix in a pass because I thought their alignment was weird, and we're going to hit the seam up the middle to Sean Kelly, who spun out those defenders. So we are thriving offensively so far, and we've got to get this three-peat. We're going to keep it with Davis, but they were able to play it perfectly. So that makes this a pretty crucial third and eight, and we're just going to have to run around, maybe throw it on the run. He looks so tired, but he still gets it for us, and he's still going. I don't know how our star quarterback doesn't get injured a little bit more, but I can't complain. Josh Hartman gets us a touchdown, and now we just have to get some more stops on defense, which shouldn't be an issue. We have forced a fumble. That was almost instantly, and Bobby Thompson's gone. I hope they don't call this back, because there's a chance he could have been down. But the refs aren't challenging anything, and we'll take it for sure. I cannot believe that I was able to speak that into existence. And on second and 11, they are passing. That corner route's open, and so is the slant to Robinson. We honestly shouldn't be getting that aggressive with our defense. We've been getting stops. So I'll refrain from blitzing, and on second and 12, Lionel King almost threw a pick. Here we go, a chance to get a big stop on the Bulldogs, and we are sticking with that route. There's no way that they just caught it. EA's trying to make this a competitive playoff matchup with stuff like that happening, but they did give us that fumble for a touchdown, so I guess I can take that back. And I gotta appreciate that fluky stuff like that can happen, because it is realistic, and this is a great chance to make them take another field goal on third and five, where the man coverage didn't stick. I thought we had them held there, but I guess we didn't, and this is gonna be a touchdown. So Georgia has managed to keep it within four points, and we're about to find out if play action can fool them. They only sent three players in, but they got the pressure, and I got thrown away. Big third and eight now. I'm gonna try and pick apart this zone where Walters is gonna make the catch, and I'm surprised that they guarded that hitch route there. Normally, they don't in zone coverage, but it all works out anyway. They've gone with man-to-man -man coverage, and we had somebody deep. I swear, it's every time we start to throw the ball more, we start to run into issues like this, but we drop it, and Georgia gets the stop. I swear, making some of those throws and reads is just like muscle memory. I have played way too much NCAA football, and I'm still struggling against the computer here in season 10 with a great team. Now on second down, a little bit of play action. We got the man-to-man -man coverage out there. I'm ready for that route, and this could be the interception that we have needed. I knew Grant Sanders would make it, and that's his sixth one this season, so he's having a great year. Now on this next one, I am just going to run around and make that cornerback pick between one of these two players. He comes at John Davis, and it worked. If this could be the final drive of the first half, we would be sitting very pretty. And John Davis is going to take this one where he gets around to that side of the field, and he might just be gone. This is not the final drive of the first half. But we're up by 11, so I have nothing to complain about. And the run commits this season have changed everything for Grand Rapids. It's made us so much better. I've got a lot of hints that have said watch for the draw like this. And whenever we do, we know that we're going to stop them. So we're getting the ball back with a minute left in this half. And if we could get even more points, that would be incredible. I am running around, then throwing it over to Pat Walters. But he clearly wasn't expecting me to make that read as he's dropped the ball, and now we're taking the sack. You know what? At the end of the day, I am perfectly fine with how this first half went. And I'm not going to force anything that could lead to us making a mistake. We just have to make sure they don't get a field goal, and they're getting close to midfield. All right, we'll see what type of play they draw up if they're able to get into field goal range. I've sent in the pressure, and this is going to be picked off by Grant Sanders. There's a lot of green grass in front of him too, but he can't get around. And Deion Sanders' nephew is going off right now. We're going to maintain our 11-point lead, and I'm going to start the second half by throwing the ball because I feel like we could burn them deep, which is what we have done to Sean Kelly, who just got a burst of speed. That was an 86-yard bomb they weren't expecting, and I knew we could catch them off guard. We've been so run heavy that teams don't even see stuff like that coming when they play us. And on second and four, they just hand it off again to pick up the first down, and we got to make a tackle. You all better start to soak it in because this looks like it might be the final Grand Rapids episode ever. And the linebacking core on this team is probably one of the reasons they've all been with us for a while, but we can't bring them down. So I guess I should stop talking so highly about them, and they're going to pick up this third and nine. In order to come back, Georgia still has a lot of work to do, though. So I'm not too worried, and we just shot the gap perfectly, but their quarterback kept it, so we're just going to try and drill him. I'm going to send the house in his direction on third and inches, where we aren't going to get in pressure in time. They've taken it over to their running back, and I shouldn't have clicked on. Now they're going to hand it off again, and there wasn't many players on this side of the field. There's no way that 24 is going to be caught. And we're back.
back to only being up by 11 where Josh Hartman gets a couple of great blocks and he's going to have one of his biggest runs. Because he's not the quickest, it's been really hard during his career to break off large runs with him, but he's such a threat being 266 pounds that teams don't know how to stop him short, and having somebody that can get you at least two yards guaranteed no matter what is game changing. There's so many pieces on this team like him that have been with us for all of our best seasons, and now Jay Atkins is out there in Wildcat where he's going to try to get to the outside. But that was not what I meant to do, and we better lock in because Georgia cannot stop us here. We're not going to get a field goal. We're getting a touchdown. We've got to put the Bulldogs away so we can lock in our spot in the national championship. And on second and five, I'm just going to keep it with John Davis up the middle, which sends us into the fourth quarter. I think I'm just going to let Josh Hartman go to work here where he gets us like five, and surely he will find a way to get in sooner rather than later. But they have forced a third and goal, and we're going to take our hitch to our tight end. Nicholas McNeil comes up big for us again, and I think we're good to say we are moving on to the national championship, but Grant Sanders just gave up that play to Brooks, and they still have five minutes left to make things interesting, where they are just going to toast us deep. What are you doing, Bobby Thompson? It's not over, and on the two-point conversion, they're going to fail to get it. But I don't know what happened there. We just gave them the easiest touchdown of their life, and Jay Atkins is getting a huge return for us. He just somehow is still going. Did you all see that defender just run backwards? I don't know what happened. He literally would have caught us, but the game just decided to send him like five yards back for no reason. And I used to think that nothing in NCAA football was scripted, but the series has changed that. Sometimes some really glitchy stuff happens and there's not much you can do about it, but it's all good. We are set to go on to a championship and we're giving that up. I just don't enjoy whenever glitchy stuff happens, but we're going to make a tackle and we're in trouble if they pass on fourth and three because I ran commit and Danny King can't bring him down in time. I don't know why Georgia still thinks they stand a chance, but Grant Sanders is struggling to stop Brooks and he got those two interceptions, but he's also had a lot of times where he's just gotten toasted. There's a sack and it was about time that Jason Taylor got in. We have some zones out there to guard all these routes and come on boys, let's just get the pick. They literally just said that was a touchdown and this is the most points we've given up all year, but at least we were able to recover the onside kick. So we're just a couple first downs away from sealing it and to stay in it, the Bulldog defense needs to step up, but Josh Hartman just keeps on going. So things are looking good for Grand Rapids and we've had to play Georgia in the playoffs quite a few times in this series, but they've never taken us down. So that's a good thing and let's just end it with this run where Josh Hartman picks it up. I think we're gonna pull off the three-peat and our fans are absolutely loving the thought of it. But John Davis needs to have one more good game and it's gonna be against either Pitt or Cal. So who would have thought we'd be playing an ACC school in the championship? We know that we could have destroyed Pitt because we already had to do that this season, but unfortunately Cal was able to get the win and this is it, the final game in the Grand Rapids series. On paper, we're seven overalls better, but they're actually favored to take us down and I'm not sure why. Their only loss came to Michigan, who we've beaten and Andrew Luck has gotten upgraded so far. It's crazy that we're already at the end of a series because it feels like just yesterday I started filming this, but it's been going on for over two and a half months now and they're gonna start off this game with a 15 yard run. That's not great from our defense, but we should be able to stop them eventually. I know that we're capable and to only give up like 10 points a game is a crazy average, but it looks like Jordan Williams has gotten burnt by number 84 and he's inside our red zone. I'm sure this is the exact start that the Golden Bears were looking for against us, but we forced the fumble. What a hit. And can we talk about how insane Grant Sanders has been for this team? If we win the championship, I'd say it's because of him. And I'd argue that he's been a better defensive player for us this year than Kyle Patrick has. We can't get too carried away though, because it's already third and 13 and that was not open. So that was not an ideal first drive for Grand Rapids, but they stopped our run really well. And this is going to bounce inside the 38. Now, in order to get points, they're going to have to work it all the way down the field again. And on second and 12, it looks like they're going to have somebody open, but the receiver and the quarterback weren't on the same page. That is great for us because now all we have to do is hold them and I see their corner routes open. Why aren't we guarding him? I might just have to use her that myself, but I don't know what their QB is doing because he doesn't seem to be on the same page as the rest of his team. And it looks like that could have been picked. Man, this is not a good start for Courtney Wall. And we were all over the slant, but the user was terrible. So that one's on me. We should have gotten the stop and we do here. Now I have been told a run is coming so we can run command. And maybe this will be the third down where we actually get them off of the field as it's now fourth and one, but they are determined to get more than just a field goal. And that's a bad throw. It seems like their quarterback doesn't know what to do whenever we put him under pressure. John Davis gets a decent run and it's about time that he does considering that's what he does best. Our last drive stalled out because they were so committed to stopping it, but they aren't doing the same here. And so far it's been a scoreless first quarter as they shot that gap right. I gotta give credit to Cal. They're playing pretty well, but there's nobody on the drag route. So Ryan Thompson's gonna pick it up for us. And what a terrible first quarter. If you like defense, I guess it could be entertaining. Josh Hartman is gonna break one, but they're making us work for every last yard on the ground. And there we go. I think we've run it enough just to try and mix in a play action just to see if we could have gashed their defense, but their safety made a fantastic defensive 
of play there. And I'm hoping for man-to-man -man coverage on third down because we just sent those routes out there. I think we're taking a field goal. Unlike the Golden Bears, we're not going to be greedy. We want to get three points. And our defense is set up to get gashed by a run, but we still stop them for a second there. So it stinks that Lewis Perry was able to get more, but we're all over Washington. And this is a huge third and two where we are not going to make the tackle with Danny King. But Kyle Patrick brought him down and Jay Atkins is going to get this return, go to the left side, and he is stuck. They have come out looking like they're about to blitz us, and they are. So we're going to try and go deep on them, but they stuck with Holiday, And that's why you just keep it on the ground where John Davis pitches it over to Josh Hartman. He has some good blocks, and that's a first. And if you get the right blocks, you can really make anything happen, which John Davis is going to do here. There's only one player that might be able to catch him. It's 43, and it looks like, unfortunately, he's going to. So he didn't make it all the way there, but he could on this next play, and that's not happening. The Cal defense cannot lock up now. We have got to be able to reach the end zone. And on third and goal, it looks like they're not going to put anybody on our tight end. He's going to go down, though. So we should probably be smart and just take our field goal. And we'll see what they pull off with 57 seconds left in the half. That's a lot of time. But we've already come away with a sack. So they waited ages to hike this ball, and that means they should just take this to the end of the second quarter. But I guess they want to give themselves a chance to get points before the half. And instead, they almost gave points to us, but that ball was dropped. So Jay Atkins does have a chance to get a good kick return, but he doesn't go anywhere. And it's six to zero. It's been a very defensive battle. And I love this motion play. We're going to see if Cal lets us pull it off. And it looks like Josh Hartman is going to cut it back. And that is a beautiful run from Josh Hartman. He needs John Davis to block for him if there's anybody that might catch him, but this could be the biggest run of his career. And it just came in the national championship. I have never seen the 266 pounder move like that, but it is about time we had something like that go our way. And we are applying pressure to Cal who really needs to get points on this drive. Now it's second and nine, and it looks like they're just handing it off again. Danny King got over to Perry, but not before he made it third and one. And that's where they're going to pick this up. We need him to actually bring him down on this play. And it's time to lock in. They can't continue to run it down our throats like this. Kyle Patrick just got stiff armed into oblivion though and what is happening they clearly need to get Marcus done more touches and that's what they're doing here Kyle Patrick isn't able to tackle him again and are you kidding me there's no excuses for something like that they've started to break literally every single tackle and this is a perfect example bring him down the goal is to get a goal line hold that would change almost everything because they'd be behind by two possessions but they've hit us with the halfback draw and he's short I'm just gonna run commit and hope for the best if they're passing we're definitely not stopping them and they get in so we're only up by six but we have it back and Josh Hartman getting another carry with a couple of great blocks. Is he about to have another huge run on this defense? Clearly, he's looking to get some more touches, so we're going to continue to give it to him, and look at that. The blocks are lining up perfectly for him, and they're so worried about John Davis, but now they're starting to swarm, and it's Jay Atkins that's out there on the field. Well, this is a pretty big third and nine, and you know what? I'm going right back to Ryan Thompson. He runs that drag perfectly, and we're inside the 10. The Golden Bears almost had us there, but now John Davis keeps it. Just a couple of guys to beat, and he is in the end zone. We're back up by two possessions almost instantly. And Cal only has about seven minutes left in this game between these last two quarters. I did miss that tackle there and they're going to break one. But if we can keep this lead, we're going to end this series on a perfect note. And I'm very curious to see how many players on our team get drafted. There's a lot of seniors. It looks like they're just going to get nothing, but the ball is loose and they have picked it up. Unfortunately, we almost had forced another fumble on them. And to start the fourth quarter, they're in trouble. It's already third and 11 and they have got to pick something up here. I think they had their check down open underneath. And how did Powell get that. There were like four zones in the area. Sometimes players just don't make the play when you expect them to, but our man-to-man -man coverage is sticking kind of nicely. There was somebody open and we get the sack. That's going to make it a lot harder for them to move the chains on this down, but I'm expecting something to come and it's Grant Sanders that can't keep up. Peter Rogers was somehow able to outrun him as a tight end and we got to talk about how good of a throw and a catch that was. They must have missed the extra point though if it's still 13 to 20 and there's only five minutes left in this game. We are so close to pulling off to three-peat, but we still have a lot of work to do against them and it's time to start chewing the clock to see if we're able to run out the rest of it. Josh Hartman goes nowhere, but we don't need much. We only need like 10 yards every three plays. And here on third and six, I'm just going to have somebody open over the middle, but John Davis didn't get it out in time. I knew the play action was going to be a little bit risky there, but it also created a lot of separation for our receiver and the punt bounces inside the 25. So we can still lean on our defense to get a stop. But man, I wish this one was already over and we're going to hold wall. Now it is second and 13 where I'm going to stick with this slant and he's trying to scramble. Kyle Patrick's all over 
over it. And there's only two minutes left in this game now. They better have something drawn up good on third down. But it was a terrible pass. And this is it. If they don't pick this up, it's all over. We have some good zone coverage deep. I'm going to stick with their tight end. This is a 50-50 ball and Williams is going to intercept it. I wish he didn't catch it because they have all three of their timeouts. So technically it isn't over yet. But I'm sure Josh Hartman can get us four yards. And we're going to see if he can pick up this third and five where that is just going to be enough. It is done. It was a very close call, but we have won the championship over Cal. And Grand Rapids has pulled off the three P. That was by far the easiest season that we've ever had. But we've also compiled a really good team. And it was about time that everybody stepped up. For our final performance, John Davis didn't have to throw the ball that much, but we ran it so well that it doesn't matter. And there you go. The Mastodons have won three in a row. Over the course of his career, Andrew Luck went 94 and 43 with a 28 game winning streak being his longest one. And some of these stats for Grand Rapids aren't that impressive, like versus our rivals or our average recruiting class. But then you see that we had three Heisman winners, six award winners, and 35 All-Americans. We also have new additions to our record book, including Grant Sanders taking Kyle Patrick's record. And with the announcement of head coach Andrew Luck retiring early, there's a ton of players that are entering the NFL draft, including John Davis, who might have been better than Pat Smith and Ryan Pace, and then Deion Sanders' nephew, the greatest corner in school history. I mean, Danny King, Kyle Patrick, Bobby Thompson, Josh Hartman, Jared Snyder, Alex Diggs, you know all these names. And they just continue to go on and on. This team had so much success, even Aaron Adams. It's going to be hard to say goodbye to all of these players. And we only set a few NCAA records in this series, but when it came to our school ones, Ryan Pace has better stats than John Davis. Then at wide receiver, you're going to see guys like Zach Wilson and Matt Land. And then there's Greg Sanders and Steven Anderson on defense, but nobody could ever forget about Joel Johnson. To wrap it up at halfback, we have the Josh Hartman and John Davis duo. And he'd get drafted in the first round of the Commanders, even though it didn't show up on here. And you're just going to see so many different players getting their NFL opportunity. And because I personally want to thank you all so much for all the support on this series, if you go down to the description, you'll find a link where you can download this Grand Rapids team and start from scratch, but you will have to build the roster if you want to use it. I know it'll work on PC. And again, thank you all so much for all the support on the series. I had a blast filming it and I will see you all in the next one.